the outlaw. Night 2022 here on Real Country 102.1 Outlaw. And we've got Chad Huddleston here. We've got Gene Davis here. We've got Callie here with us. Uh, again, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. But we're fixing to send Callie out. Yes. Oh, well, I'm, I'm no. heading out now. Oh, she's going already. <laughs> well. Yes. It's 7 o'clock. It is. It is. And that means the polls are closing across this part of Florida. Now, the panhandle will be open for another what, hour. Another hour. Another hour. Okay. All so, right. so we won't see statewide election results for another hour. Okay. Since Florida overlays into two different time zones, right. obviously they're not going to release anything on uh, from the Florida Division of Elections until um, 8 p.m. here, our local time. Okay. All right. Uh, well, what can you tell us so far? I mean, is there anything going on right now as far as it is, I mean, Yes, yeah. Run. Actually, we can go and uh, go ahead and take a look at the turnout today for, um, let me refresh this. Okay. Sure I'm, I'm going to give you the information here. We can look at the turnout for Hardy County okay. today. And the turnout was 41.19%. We had 5,531 voters. And I believe that's more than the last election. I yeah, quite a bit more. I haven't pulled those numbers. Maybe we can get those in a little bit. But um, if we look at the breakdown of this, we can look at 734 voted by mail ballots, um, 2,029 voted early, and on election day, I've been watching this number all day, and it's been creeping up and up and up and up. 2,765 people went out and voted today on election day. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I like, we'd like to see a high turnout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, absolutely. We talked about this, I think, the last time, um, the last election, how many people that are registered to vote in Hardy County, and I think it's around 13,000 or so is what the number was then, and, and it might have been a turnout last time of maybe 2,200 or something. I, I don't recall. Like I say, we can uh, we can pull those numbers a little bit later, okay. but it was considerably lower. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I thought, man, what a shame. Now, this was now that the last election should have been a high turnout. You would have thought so because it was the presidential election. Always, always the presidential election is, is always much, uh, much higher turnout. And but this then, may change that. This may very well change that. This has been, you know, seems to have a lot of individuals motivated to to get out and vote. However, from the candidate side of things, it seems to have been very quiet around here. Yeah, I, it really has. It really has. I, mean, I, I haven't seen as many campaign signs out here. Um, You're right. You're right. I did today um, when I went to the poll, polling. But there's party. a reason behind that. We only had one local race on the ballot. Okay. We only yeah, had but I, mean, one I, I didn't see, race. like, Ron DeSantis sign. I mean, there may have been some out there yeah, somewhere. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie Chris. I mean, I just haven't seen the sign. Like, usually, normally the things are on every Everywhere, street corner. Every street corner. You know? uh, I think in another two years, uh, when the presidential election is coming around, I think you'll see a drastic increase from today, okay. you know, from this election cycle, as far as activity is concerned. Now, I also heard something interesting. I've heard a lot today. Have you, Gene? I've heard a lot today. Well, I mean, election wise. Oh, okay. <laughs> election wise. Um, that they county, of course, Miami, a much higher voter turnout than they have pre previously seen. And I guess there was someone from this particular network that was outside polling people as they were leaving and asking them if they would buy, you know, you know. And uh, from what they were saying, now, of course, people do whatever they want to be behind that curtain, but they're saying. They were voting Republican. That may be a large increase in the Republican vote in Dade County than in previous years. Now, all that, we'll find out if that's true here in a little while. Right, right. But if, that, if that's true, 
something. You're right. That's predominantly liberal leaning yes. turnout. Yes. Yeah. But um, as since you mentioned uh, um, party, how, how which party turned out, stuff okay. like that. Okay. Let's look here in Hardy County. We right. can take a look at uh, the total ballots by the party, and Democrats turned out one thousand one hundred and twenty four. Uh, votes today. 1,124. 1, okay. And Republicans, 3,883. No party affiliation is 484. And others is 40. And what was the Republican? 3,883. Now, keep in mind those numbers may change a little bit because uh, mail in ballots may have gotten dropped off at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Right up to election time, you can drop all the supervisor of elections, mm -hmm. uh, provisional ballots from the precincts as they come in. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things can change these numbers a little bit. And, and we don't know necessarily how they We just know that was the people that turned out, correct? This is correct. This is correct. So uh, at this moment, um, we don't have any results unless they have. Let me refresh this video here and see. Because I can. Um, they have it out here. So um, at 7 p.m. Um, on election night, the supervisor of elections is supposed to release the mail-in ballots that have been counted, yeah. meaning that they have gone through the canvassing board, been accepted as a, as a ballot, okay. and run through the machine and counted. Okay. And they have, uh, are supposed to release um, early votes. Now, I know you're saying, well, it's past seven, and they're supposed to do so. Well, it takes a few minutes right, because right. that has to go through the process of getting the numbers updated to this website and getting it pushed out to us. Uh, I'm, I'm sure an IT guy could say, well, we can have it out in minutes. Well, you know, it's, it's election <laughs> night. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody is staring yeah, over their yeah. shoulders, and they're, and they're working diligently to get those numbers out. I'm sure we'll have those in uh, very time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now locally here in Hardy County as the precinct votes at seven and if people obviously they get the vote. But but when 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 it when it when they actually close that machine down, what happens then? Okay. So at seven PM when polls close mm -hmm. the there is a poll worker. If there is a line, there's a poll that goes to the last person in line and stand behind them until that person votes. So if you're there and you're in line at 7 p.m. You're going to get cash ballot. Okay. Now, there is also such thing as if for some reason the governor extends voting hours. Usually that's a legal issue and some order comes down from a judge at last minute. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those can happen and you'll see voting hours extended. Mm -hmm. If that happens, all of the ballots from 7 p.m. further is kept separate from any other ballot in case there is uh, a legal contest those and they get deemed that it wasn't justifiable to for whatever reason. Okay. So those, those are kept separate All right. if that happens. However, under normal operating procedures at 7 p.m., last person gets to vote. Everybody's gone out and voted either earlier at the pre -signal. We use the, the Dominion ICE tabulators. Right. You slide your ballot in there and you hear a little theme. Yeah, yeah. One the lady, the yes. day, she's like, wait, you hear the bell? <laughs> she told me that. And it was and, a second or two, and I'm like, where's the bell? Baby? And that's good. Yeah. That's good. Now, if you, those machines are pretty impressive. Those machines read both sides of that ballot at, at that time. was a very long ballot, by the way. I don't know if people yep. realized beforehand. I mean, there was a lot of stuff on there. And I, I voted. I mean, I did the right thing and voted on there. Ho hopefully, everybody read before they went to, to set the, yeah. to, to the polls because if not they were going to sit there for a few I minutes did. reading through I, all I of did. that. I, I read through it. And... Per perfect example of get you a sample ballot, fill it out the way you want. Um, that way you can study, check. There's yes, one there. Perfect. Rush the seller. <laughs> when they come in, and then the person that's supposed to show it to them didn't read it. That way, yeah. That way you can have oh. everything, everything set. You know what you're doing. You're ready to go when you get in there. But, yeah. um, so the last person votes, slides their machine in or their ballot in the machine. So the clerk, which 
uh, your poll workers, you'll have a clerk, assistant clerk, you'll have a poll deputy, and then you may have some assistance around there that's uh, helping also. But the clerk will go over with the assistant and or an additional staff member. They'll take a look at the receipt that was printed out when they first turned that machine on. There's a receipt. Now, I don't know how many people's noticed, but behind the monitor, it looks like a receipt just off of a, a cash register. Yeah. On that receipt, it prints out every race that's on the ballot and about what the results are. So in the morning, you print what we call a zero tape. The zero tape proves there are no preloaded results on that machine, and that's printed out at 7 a.m., mm -hmm. and that is witnessed by multiple poll workers there mm -hmm. and signed at the bottom. We witness that. That proves that this machine, and they can attest to it, this machine had no preloaded uh, results on this machine. Okay. So when polls close, they do the reverse. Um, only the clerk has a key, and probably hanging around a lanyard on her neck, it looked kind of like a, um, a little magnet look. It doesn't look like a regular key, but you take it up to the machine, and the area that reads. If that, that's the right key for that machine, it will allow her the ability to, to operate the machine. It'll open up like a menu on the screen. She can hit close polls and print zero tape. When she does so, it'll print out another receipt. That receipt now should have the same amount of ballots that it says on the screen, and they keep a record of how many ballots they've handed out during the day. And what happens is they compare those numbers. And sure that it's right. Now, they also have to keep in mind if there's a provisional ballot that didn't go in the machine that's held separate, or if there is a spoiled ballot where someone made a mistake or it got tore or it got messed up and they were issued another one, all those are accounted for. They got envelopes that go in, where they come from, who they come, all that kind of good stuff. Every ballot's accounted for. You match the number on that zero tape with the number of ballots that went through that machine, and you ensure that that machine hasn't had anything additional provided to it. How in the world? I mean, it sounds like a very good system that we have here. It absolutely is. There's lots of checks and balances. You know, I'm not trying yeah, to yeah, yeah, fire yeah. across the ballot, but I mean, there's so many places where there's all these discrepancies. Because what you just described to me there sounds like a legit. This is all public records, so anybody that wants to see those zero tapes from any precinct there is at any given time can go down to the supervisor of elections and review this stuff. You can review every single voted ballot. You can't touch it, but right. the staff member will move the ballot and let you look at It's all public record in Florida. And, and that there again, Florida. And I think yes. this is a, I mean, pretty darn good system here that we got. We have. I guarantee you'll probably have the, the total in after 8 o'clock pretty quick. It's not going to take long. Yes. And in Florida, we don't have an electronic system. We have a paper-based system. So you can always go back to the balance. If there was ever a concern that machine malfunctioned, you could even go down to hand counting those ballots if it absolutely had to. More than likely, you would set up the election on a new machine, run that new machine through all those tests, run the ballots and confirm that you got the same results. Now, these machines are tested two times prior to every election, and they're tested one time after every election to yeah, ensure yeah. that they're accurate. Yeah. I mean, sounds like, sound like a pretty good deal. I I could, I I mean, could talk about the, this forever and order by death. But, no, but I find uh, it interesting. You know, I think, it's a, I think it's a lot of things that most folks don't understand no. of what all goes well, into Well, the only time we usually hear about these things is when there's a problem. When there's a problem. And 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 here in the last couple of years, there have been problems in other states, not here. You know, I mean, we haven't had that problem since, I guess, 2000. And, of course, that was an entirely different system. But, I mean, we, we hear about these situations in Wisconsin. We hear about in Milwaukee. We hear about in Arizona. And it sounds... Compared to what you just described to me, that's the way to go. It is. You know, I think it's Alabama. Clerk of the court is your supervisor of elections. They administer the elections, too. How do you put that much responsibility on somebody? Yeah, and I don't know how many counties Both they of have those are full-time jobs. In Alabama, but I'm going to guess there's probably more than 67 counties in that state, probably that's 130. True. And they're not the only state. I know that one off the top of my head. And I was a little bit taken back when I yeah. found that out. You know, that 
they feel like uh, it doesn't justify someone specifically donate or dedicated to elections, we'll just give it to the clerk of court. Too. That's nice. Yeah. Of yeah. But, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it, most people just never realize how much work goes into ensuring the right. accuracy of these things. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you something else, too, is those machines, um, like I said, are tested two times for the election. The election software that's on that machine has to be, uh, the, the, the builder of that machine will provide you software update just like any other technology, piece of technology that you have. However, you can't accept it from the manufacturer of that machine. Dominion cannot hand that software update. Your copy has to go to the Division of Elections. They ensure that it is perfect and well, it is okay before it's handed to each individual. And I, and I think that's why I personally have a lot of confidence in the election system in the state of Florida. For sure. There's a lot of checks and balances. And, and apparently these other states, for whatever reason, don't have those and no wonder it's a quagmire every time there's and, an election. And you want to get back to what happens after the, the poll worker runs that result tape. They have results for that precinct in hand. They run a second one. They take that and they place it on the door of the precinct. Now, the, the original one, on the side of this machine, your tabulator, there's two little doors that open. One of those doors has a large SD card. The other door has a large backup SD card. So they take the one SD card and they bring it, they, they physically drive it back to the Supervisor of Elections office. That card is then taken into the Supervisor of Elections office and inside the Supervisor of Elections office, I see an office with the election management system. Mm -hmm. It is not tied to the internet. It has no internet capabilities even into that room. So you can't say that it was hacked. Mm -hmm. um, and those are go, go in there from each precinct, every machine. And that's how you formulate all the, uh, yeah, all the was, from every precinct, you get countywide results. That was going to be my next question about the machine. Does it connect to the internet anyway? And Absolutely not. not. They do no. not. That does not mean that um, some software glitch couldn't be on a thumb drive that got on right. to a but computer there's these other checks and balances. If this, if yes. the tape was giving you one number, and and, and you got two tapes giving you the identical number, correct? And that's showing you something Again, else. Again, you can have all the glitches you want. We're a paper-based ballot yeah. system. You can go back to the ballot and can count those if you got down to that where you actually had to do it to confirm that result. I, I myself today and Gene told me the same thing. He, he would tell you later. <laughs> Make sure we run that rod all the way through that punch card. You know what I mean? So there were no hanging chads. I mean, right through. Yeah. Like, yeah. No hanging chads. No, no pregnant no, chads. No, no, no pregnant chads. I was holding it up to the light to make sure. You know, I really think that Florida got such oh, a, man. a black eye over that that they have went above and beyond to ensure that that's not the well, case anymore. the only time I ever used my punch card ballot was the first year that I voted, and that was in the 90, uh, 94. And they had those things. And, and I thought, even then, I thought, how crazy is this? I run that, that thing through the early season. So where, where's the little check mark? Here, that's what I was looking for. Right. And by the time the next election cycle rolled around, which would have been 96, my second time to get in the vote, those things were gone. The county had gone there and got rid of them. Gone. The punch yeah. card gone. So when 2000 comes around, and when we hear about this county, Palm Beach, which is generally up to me, and they're having this punch card problem, I was surprised that they were still using them in a place like Palm Beach County. Right. I mean, I'm like, you know, we've already got these optical scan machines up here now, and they don't have them over there? I was like, wow. Have you noticed in the August primary, the new equipment at your precinct, when you go to check in and they take your driver license, have you noticed that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. I was smiling so, faces sitting there and I gave her my license and, and she didn't ask, but I gave her my card, yeah. which is in horrendous shape, I I really should do something about that. And it's not only that. Call the 
supervisor of the elections yeah. office, if you can't find your vote, your voter registration card, you need a new one. Call yeah. the supervisor of elections office. Yeah, and they'll mail one right out. She said yep. you can get there, get a new one. Because I told her, see, I just got you can you can read it, but it's a little rough. But no, I didn't notice. So what's changed there? So you yes. don't have to have the voter registration you do not. card. Read you no, do not. you don't. You don't. I had mine out just because I don't know. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The little sign with the yes. finger thing. Okay, mm -hmm. before it was a book. We were right. we were one of two counties that were still left using the, book? the paper. Book. <laughs> and you're I'm, right. I'm telling gone. you, we would set up at the supervisor of elections office and print and print and print and print those yeah, books imagine. for each precinct. Yeah. Every registered voter for each precinct. You know, I, I, the lady thought it was a little odd today, so you know me. I got I go in there, and I, I, I got to make a big entrance, you know. So I'm right. standing there, and I'm like, um, she's kind of concerned. You guys. I said, well, I'm looking for the first letter of my last name. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Yes. And, yes. and, and she says, oh, you don't have to be. Of course, you probably thought, wow, this guy's out, you know, because there's no letter there at all. But uh, Gene's looking for his card as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's already voted, shape. but we gotta make sure. Yeah. No, you're right. I noticed that was gone. And listen, I went in down there today. There was no wait. There was no line. Uh, there was there was other a couple other people there voting when I got there, and then when I thought I was leaving, there was some more people that showed up. But there was no no uh, wait there. Look at there. He found it. Uh, look at the condition about that one too. It's in pretty good shape. Yeah, you can tell he don't get that out often. Mm -hmm. I bet he keeps that one behind the protected window. Let me see here. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's getting out another one. 1964. Your original. 1964. So, I, my hat hasn't been in my wallet for years. I was concerned when he pulled out, too, if he was going to try to vote twice. If that's what <laughs> he was doing over here. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm amazed. Look at the condition of that thing. It's that is an original awesome. voting awesome. card. Yeah. We did a museum here in town, Sonny Coker. <laughs> Who was that? Sonny the, Coker. The, 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 the election supervisor of elections. Of elections. About four, back, three, four back. Mm -hmm. That card's older than that. Oh, it? he was supervisor of elections for a long, oh, okay, long time. Okay. A long time. I don't remember how long, but for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if you look on that card in fine print, it says, uh, um, Certified by uh, Linda Johnson, President. <laughs> <laughs> Original. Oh no. Original. Yeah. Zero zero one. <laughs> <laughs> Asked Gene, "What was your phone number?" He said it was two. I said, "You gotta have more digits than that." He said, "No, just two. He said, I was first in the town. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Gene. But no, um, I'm no. not even gonna ask about his email. <laughs> uh, do you remember your first email? I do. Or my only, what, what, what did we have back then? Was it Stratonet? Wasn't it? What I had a Juno. Yeah. Mine was a Juno account. Okay. Okay. A Juno account. I don't know what it was. But uh, no. Um, I did notice those. <coughs> down because yes, the the the, 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 the signature uh, deal and the the of the dual strength that was nice. And and then of course it asked you your address. Correct you. But yes, the lady you find counter is of course very happy because if you tell her no, then there's something wrong. You don't want to do that. So they were they had lunch cook every day. Or, or, it's not like snowy, I don't know. I voted oh. over about the Civic Center, so oh, right. if somebody from the Civic Center is listening, yeah. the chili smelled great. <laughs> yeah. Well let me tell you those four words now, so this is something that most folks don't understand. And I made a post about this earlier this morning. When you go out to vote Sure, and thank your poll workers because I'm yeah. telling you, those folks right there in Hardy, there's probably 70 to 100 employees that come out and help on really on election day. Without them, there's no way we could pull this off. There's yeah, and no I, and I would have guessed can. that number I thought would have been much lower 70 to 100. 70 wow. to 100. So, and I don't How remember many precincts the exact number. There there's 12 precincts, okay, and you have at minimum. Three per precinct, and usually probably four. There was four. I think there was there four at the. Uh, yes. Oh, you and were there too. I was there. Too. Did you have the chili? Chili was gone. Yeah, I was there one time. I looked in the crock pot. And it was gone. <laughs> I looked in there. I was in Georgia. 
Texas, Georgia, and uh, actually a couple. You got um, you got nothing, but I'm sure nothing. You got you got the race between uh, Raphael uh, Warnock and um, that definitely should be interesting. Uh, Herschel Walker. Walker. Yeah, yes. and then you got the uh, uh, Stacey Abrahams, and you got uh, um, uh, I the don't governor call his name, governor. but yes. yeah. And yes. so, and, and their polls close at seven. And they're all in the same time zone, so we should be hearing something from up there. And I think people like you know that, that's that's. I'm very concerned about that. This is probably the first election that I know of. That there's so much. But it, it was so exciting. I'm curious about how the hunt this time. Right. Because it can change drastically what's going on. And you're right. This is what I can remember. People, they're not so just just, just interested in local. They want to happen across the board. Interesting. Right. I, I think with the way that the country has has, has gone. Yes, people are interested. That's not here. To make a world of what's going on. I was here about the uh, Almost everyone said that's what people. I would say I heard that more than anything else. Yeah. But if it's your main budget, I mean, it's a food. Right. Budget. So I think that got certainly around. <laughs> Sadly, but and be careful. You get these kind because I mean, all you got to do is grocery store. And I know, I'm not trying to be funny here, but you create money to place this earth. Because if there's a shortage of Elmer's glue, it's because of the war in Ukraine. If there's a shortage of diesel, it's because of the war in Ukraine. If there's a shortage of uh, 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 sorry, it's because of the war in Ukraine. And you notice that. If Ukraine is getting blamed, they bring everything like my Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and it's like, how much can you blame on this war? I mean, I can understand the Sorts of certain I made the truth away from the people do it. But George, that's how we get here. There's a healthy war in Greek. That's what that's really this is about. That's what I'm Is um, you know, in the don't worry, he'll uh, get up in a haze. I just imagine I just um, 35. I think it was probably my family, probably, probably 90. Eight percent of my family was probably Democrat thirty years 
yeah. and they're very new that are now. They, they, it started around 1994. Yeah, that's is when they it. started straying from the party. Yeah, you would see the Florida ladies, even though they were mainly Democrats back then, they were called Southern Democrats. Dixie Crap. They, they were different. That's right. And I mean, totally different than what Democrats are today. This is going to sound like an oxymoron, but they were conservative minded registered Democrats. Right. Yes. Well, I think that's why I mentioned has stayed steadfast as a Democrat. Because there's a lot of folks in, the, in that state that are of the of the what do you call it? same mindset mindset mm -hmm. of the of, of what a Democrat was 34 mm -hmm. years ago, uh, but that might have changed because just this past week, Joe Biden was elected. What's the first name? Not Joe. Is it? Uh, Manchin. Uh, uh, Manchin. Last name's Manchin. I, who we'll pretends to? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, he come out and criticized the president, and um, and said, and I quote, "He's out of touch with reality." I do not believe that he understands the scope of what he's just done. Joe Biden come out Friday, Thursday, Friday, and said it was time to shut down all coal power plants in this country now. And Joe Manchin is a leading. I think his constituents go right away. They would him, no matter what letter he had next to his name. You know, Gene mentioned. Or, I'm sorry, his voters. I meant to say his voters. voters. His voters. Gene mentioned a while ago, and I just for folks who may have uh, not caught that earlier, um, here in Harvey County, there was 1,124 Democrat votes cast. 3,000. 1,883 Republican votes cast. Three times as many. Yeah. Well, I, I will, I'll say this. I had a young lady that I know, um, which is a registered Democrat here in Hardy County. And um, she, uh, she, me and her was visiting, and she said, uh, she's visiting here, and she, was, she brought her ballot. She was going to go vote. A week or so ago, and um, she has some questions about some of this Alderman ballot. But uh, without giving a name away, sure. I will say that she's a Democrat, but she voted for um, a project. Okay. You know, she, she had to fill up so she could see what, what she, you know, and, and okay, so we don't. We don't have anything on the website up, but Callie says uh, uh, she is she's she's ready to to get some numbers up to date numbers. Um, not sure if she's calling you or you're calling her or what's going on here. Ever right? ever call in here? Okay, we'll, we'll put her right on. Is the caller there? <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I'm looking at the map on the on the screen up there and. Um, those uh, are uh, Jennings and uh, Rubio numbers up there. Okay, we got those. We got a call here. Let's see. All right, we got a call. Hello, call. Hello, JJ. How, how are you doing? We're doing great. We're doing great. This is Callie joining is us Callie. Uh, from the supervisor elections office here in Hardy County. Uh, how are things going down there? That's just swinging. It's windy. It is getting windy. She's out been there. telling me it's cold and yeah. windy out there. I'm not. I'm not complaining too much though. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um. I actually, actually uh, do have somebody here with me though. Okay. It's Lauren Cornell. She's the Alabama Democratic Party Commissioner. Uh, she's the Alabama Democratic 
Oh, all right. Well, we, got a, we got a senior class president from Hardy High School, Dwayne Cali, uh, at the supervisor elections office. So he, so Chet, he's either there to as a as a as a future in radio broadcasting, broadcasting, or politics. One of the two. No, I'm going to politics. Right? Oh. Well, well, we can always use it. Well, we can always use help around here. Oh, uh, it, it's definitely politics. Yeah. I don't care if I have radio. Face radio. How does that, that work? No. Yes, you do. He's got a personality for it. He's got a personality. That? Yeah, he does. I can tell. Well, he cracked that joke oh, right in there. <laughs> Good job. That's a great comeback, by the way. Okay, once again, tell everybody who you are. Uh, my name is Warren Cornell. I am. From Hardy High School. Yes, yeah, Hardy Senior High School. Awesome. Okay, so you're down with Cali, the supervisor of elections office. Tell us what's happening down there. Uh, I'll be honest, it, it's not too much that's happening for this um, election year and I was going to Do they still have the chalkboard out there? No, the chalkboard has been gone. They have the, the digital scrolling board. Right, Warren? No, it's not, it's not, the, not the actual chalkboard. We may not remember the chalkboard. I remember it. I was just a little bit in the class when we got there. don't remember that. And I have to remember he's only 18. We've got an old newspaper in there uh, from the year 2000, and there, there showed them in black and white putting the, the results yes. up on the chalkboard. Yes. I recall watching that. I'm I'll sure. talk to the talk guy in about that. We need that thing back. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I was supervisor of election, I had, I don't... We need that back, too. It, that was a lot more fun. <laughs> it was. It was. And the, and the person out there writing the numbers Lots of people ask for that. So yeah. let's get the chalkboard back. Here, Here's the one problem with that. Most of the time, we can get you the entire results by the time somebody could get done writing one precinct. Yeah, probably true. Probably true. Everybody be getting their vehicles and leaving before we got three or four percent. And in that picture, there's a crowd gathered around. Yes, waiting everybody was waiting for the stuff on the board. Yes, board. very much. That's what I was going to ask is, uh, have you been seeing uh, a lot of precincts coming in? Keep in mind, we have... Well, um, Fort Green, Fort Green and Ona are the farthest two away, and those will take the longest again. Fort Green and Ona are the farthest two away, and will take the longest again. Uh, he said that Fort Green and Ona are the farthest ones away, so it'll take a little while for them to get in. Now, keep in mind, you think uh, you just hop in the vehicle and just drive on up to the supervisor of elections office with the results and hand them over. That's not the case. You've got to count all the leftover balance. You've got to run those result tapes. You've got to confirm that you're not missing any balance, that everything's accounted for, everything's locked up, those machines are locked up, sealed tags. You've got to have witnesses check those tag numbers, seal those machines, sign what that, the numbers are. Everything has uh, the, the balance. Ballots come out of the machines into a, what's called a ballot bag. That ballot bag, all this has to be done with witnesses that, that sign a document saying that they watch this and the, the number, the zippers on that bag has a seal um, and they're sealed from the poll to the supervisor of elections office. The person in the supervisor of elections office confirms that that's the same tag that was put on that bag at the precinct uh, with multiple witnesses again transferring custody of those ballots. Let's over to the back to the supervisor of elections office. So all that takes time. You know, that doesn't happen right. fast. Now, you know, I don't have them on the phone. I can get into a little more detail about how the larger counties do it and um, how they do it so fast and efficiently. But I will do that while they're on the phone. And so there's no password check. Yeah, there's Yeah, it's a tough one. 
now. We got okay. stuff on the website, so you should be seeing those on the scrolling board real, real quick. So right, we have, have, it doesn't even say how many precincts are reporting yet, but um, we're going to get some stuff that this is going through here. Uh, we'll go over, uh, now keep in mind, this is just Hardy County's results. Marco Rubio um, by a mile. Uh, Scott Franklin, Ron DeSantis, Ashley Moody, Jimmy Patronus, Ben Simpson, Ben Albritton, and let's scoot down to the one that everybody around here is probably going to see. Find that. Uh, Marie Dasher and Gary McWhorter. Marie Dasher is at 1,024, and Gary McWhorter is at 827. Okay. Early votes. Uh, vote by mail, 317, 345. Total, this is the number that everybody's looking for. Marie Dasher is at 1,351. Gary McWhorter is at 1,172. At this moment, I'm not sure. We don't have a number up here yet to tell us how many votes have been reported. Obviously, Callie and them are in the parking lot. They see they're guessing about six, so maybe this is about half of the results. Okay, okay. So we're definitely waiting for more results. Right. So those numbers, those are early numbers for the school board yes. in Hardy County. And right now, again, with just the early numbers. Just the early. Let me scroll back down here to that one. Okay. So Marie Dasher is at 1,351. Gary McWhorter is at 1,172. Okay. And again, these are, these are very changed. early. Did that change the, or that same as it was? Okay. Basically, right. fifty-three to forty-six percent. Fifty-three to forty-six percent. Very good. Very good. Well, it's uh, it's a, it's clear. You guys coming out to the elections office. We know you were down there waiting for uh for some information to come in, and we hope that you'll be getting some more soon. Okay. Well, if you would like to speak with us or, or, or anything, um, we're available. Okay, I know Gary's going to say no, but put Gary on the phone. I'd love to chat with him. <laughs> Gary, first of all, I am wonderful. But first of all, let me thank you, number one, for all your service to this community and for being willing to continue that service, depending on what the results are tonight. First of all, but thank you for that. I just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done for Hardy County. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, it's been a good race. And uh, we're going to block. We, uh, I'll be around trying our best. So uh, I just like to continue with our story. Gary, I appreciate that. Um, you have, uh, have, have you had any challenges or any, anything that is out of the normal with this election cycle? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I know that uh, you guys got a busy a busy night ahead, and it looks like you as a school board member have a couple of days in the next, next day or two with this game. It's going to you guys on your toes and on the edge of your seat. Right, yeah. Uh, hopefully it will There you go, there you go. Well, Gary, I appreciate it. Gene, uh, JJ, you guys got any questions? Gary, any? I just want to say... Uh, you know, uh, wishing the best of luck tonight. I hope everything will work out just right. All right. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Gary, and he does you. a great job with mixing paint. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yeah. Gary. <laughs> he isn't the best. Gary. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say, Gene? He is the best. Gene never said best. He is that. <laughs> thank you, Gary. <laughs> thank you, sir. Oh, yes, I sir. Think so. yes, Wish sir. you the best of luck. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. How about that? And, and her assistant this evening. And here to show the election. We can put it right on the air. How about right that? On the yeah, spot. right there. And I'll tell you, I know Gary personally, and Gary is uh, Gary's one of those guys that's real shy and speaks real soft and doesn't want to be put on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but he did um, a great job. That's exactly what he told me. He said, "Oh, you're gonna put me on the spot." 
<laughs> yeah, we heard it. Well, say that. Tell, tell, tell Gary um, some some new numbers looking at his race right here, right this minute. Um, we're going to let me look at the totals here. Uh, not by some, some <laughs> oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. Okay. All right. Um, we, we're we're still. Okay. My, my apologies. I was thinking that we got something a little fresh. We're still at Marie Dasher, one thousand three hundred and fifty-one. Gary McWhorter at one thousand one hundred and seventy-two. Keep a real close eye on that race, and uh, that's going to develop because these numbers are very very early. All right. All right, Hallie, sounds good. I think, I I think she's already gone. I feeling that <laughs> steps are going. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> she's heading home for uh, tonight. Babe, yeah. Uh, we'll check back in with Callie and uh, everybody there at the Hardy County. Uh, we'll be back to some problems coming up soon. So we'll keep you updated on that. On the Walk and Crystal Walker race up there. Of course, a uh, big uh, governor, uh, Stacey, uh, Stacey for hands and um, the, 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 the current governor. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can find some good yeah. stuff to, to, to yeah. chat about here shortly. As the numbers continue to come in, our coverage will continue. Keep it here on the outline. Our live local election coverage. We are live. We are local. We are right here in the county where you are, and we are very glad to be here with you. Thank you so much for choosing Real Country 102.1, the outlaw for your election coverage. As we said, we're going to bring you local election coverage. We've got state election uh, coverage and uh, numbers from across the country. And uh, there are some of those coming in. Florida, we're going to have to wait a little bit. We're going to have to wait probably a Another 20 or so minutes before we start getting some probably numbers in, uh, because uh, the panhandle, those folks out there, uh, the time. So, yeah, before we cover two different time zones, obviously they're not going to release any results until until that second time zone polls close in that second time zone. So, okay. um, some of the some of the counties out in the panhandle, their polls are still open. There's mm -hmm. still people out there voting, casting their ballot right now. They don't close until. Our time would be eight p.m. So yeah, um, we won't get anything 
statewide bill after. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, we know early we have Sorby County about the turnout. It's looking good. good. Okay. So we'll uh, turn out numbers just in general. We have 5,501 voters turned out to vote today, early vote, and months. Yeah, look at uh, 41 percent. And I'm going to probably know the answer to this all. But what's on the mind here in recap? Probably the same as the real world. What do you think is where you're going well, you know, and I'll be talking about it, and what they, you know, would know what they say, hey, drop out of the gap off, leave, and maybe the answer say we're not another 13 cent, so yeah, that degree is here all I would think that if, if, if I had to say, what is the one thing that's on the voters' mind mm -hmm. here in Hardy County? I'd probably say one of one of two things would be my guess. Number one, the price of the pump. Mm -hmm. Number two, the price of the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those things affect you, I, everybody. Um, and you think, well, you know, if you have, if you uh, if you're really wealthy, those things don't affect you. Well, they might not affect you to the same degree as they affect us, but mm -hmm. they affect those folks too, you know, with, well, with investments, with stock, look at the stocks, stock market, mm -hmm. you know, um, look at, uh, look at the price of gold increasing, there's a sign that there's a reason why price of gold increases, you know, so, uh, but when, when you're looking at, you know, coffee and, and seeing an increase in just the cost of coffee, mm -hmm. Those things affect you. Uh, I see folks every day on my Facebook feed, love folks talking about, you know, the, the cost of something at the grocery store. I was on Facebook because back in experience, well, the supply chain shortage, stuff not on the shelves at the grocery store, okay? In other parts yes. of the country, there was still stuff here on our shelves. So I'm watching people complain in other states. Not one mention of it here until people walked in that grocery store for the first time and walked down their favorite aisle and there was this missing and that missing and I mean, like turn on a light switch. Yep. They were, it became an issue. You know what I mean? And, and so some of it is already happening, but people don't really notice it until it affects them and when it does. That's it exactly has. right. That's that's exactly right. And this is this is the number one reason why it is so important to get out and cast your ballot. Mm -hmm. You know, Callie was uh, chatting with uh, some kids in her class today, uh -huh. and you know, when you can pre-register in the state of Florida at the age of sixteen, you can't right. cast your ballot until right. you're eighteen, but you can pre-register. Mm -hmm. Uh, as early as 16 years old. You have to turn 18 before elect day to be able to cast your ballot. Okay, okay. You have to be 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So, this young lady didn't turn 18 until tomorrow. Oh, what a But she break. was pre-registered. Yeah. She doesn't turn 18 until yeah. tomorrow. How, how disheartening is that? However, oh, man. that got us on the subject of kids, students. Uh -huh. Not necessarily kids, young adults. Okay. Let's put it that way. But we can even go all the way down to elementary school. Some supervisor of elections get, gets the opportunity sometimes to go out and talk to students, and even all the way down to elementary uh, students. And you think, how can I talk to an elementary student about voting and the importance of voting? It's pretty simple. Ask them if they're in the, first of all, they're gonna say they don't know how to vote. But if they're in the car and mom says, what do you want? And you say, happy meal, you just vote. Mm -hmm. You okay, voted okay, what you sense, wanted for yeah, happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, as far as a little older students in class, sometimes you can ask them. Um, they say, oh, it's not important. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It, I, I'm not concerned about mm -hmm. it. And that's okay. So you say the first couple of kids in the first row, 
All right, what would be uh, your favorite vegetable that uh, we're going to have on lunch every day for the rest of the year and no other choice? Um, and whatever they say, I guarantee there's going to be somebody in that classroom that says, no, I don't want that. That's horrible. Right. Well, and, and that's this is a, a perfect example. I, I haven't of, really thought about that, yeah, but it is. Yeah. Because you got you got to make it relatable to their age. You know what I mean? To, just uh, I want to I want to say well, hello I to, to that very well the happy. Milk. I want to say hello to a couple of folks who yeah, are watching ahead. us online okay. on my Facebook page. We're live streaming this. We'll see if we get that spirit on the station. Yes, that would forward. be great. We'll yeah. step away for a moment. And yep. See if I can do Go that. right ahead. Um, I'm just refreshing my page here, and make sure. But we had Sam. I, I had tagged Sam. Said, "Where are you at?" You know, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, why he hadn't already been by here? You know, I was Not expecting surprised. him to come by here. But he his he must be really busy because his explanation is he's running behind. Sam, we got donuts. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, well, we're looking at the door. We're expecting him to come rushing in. But Tim Staten uh, says, "Hey guys, so uh, I want to say hello to Tim." Look that Sam fight literally just walked through the door right here. I I tell you what. Mike, the ice cream man, what's up? Here, here. I Gene mentioned donuts, and Sam walks through the door immediately. immediately. I was bringing donuts. <laughs> but, but with, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You sure you want to sit on that chair there? Maybe you want to stay where you are. It's like sits a little low. It don't Pardon come. us. We're uh, we're making some readjustments here in the studio, so we Te can uh, technical difficulties. Yeah, the technical chair difficulties here so we get sam in and get a microphone in front of him and uh, yeah, see how he's yeah, doing this evening there. sam have you been down to the supervisor relations office yet no you drew me right straight here well that's great it's like a magnet there's no need to because we got Callie down there watching everything live all you need is to be connected to give, give me a, uh, give me a check there, yes to <laughs> gene he wants you to sign <laughs> <laughs> Like your business. I got some there. <laughs> I'm gonna scroll here and see if we have anything new. We're still we're still at the same results on the website. So how many how many um, local precincts are in? Well, that's the thing. We have some results showing, but we don't have it up here at the top for precincts reporting. It still shows zero out of twelve, but obviously it just hasn't added yet. Um, well, the roving reporter saw him headed from Bowling Green to the election office. What what we are what I'm assuming we are are seeing here is early votes and vote by mails. So, um, in fact, I can confirm that's exactly what we're seeing. We're, we're seeing vote by mail and early votes. So, uh, the results for uh, our local race that everybody was uh, you're scrolling too over. fast for G. I'm sure of that. <laughs> uh, school board member District Four, uh, Marie Albritton Dasher is at 1,351 votes, and Gary McWhorter is at 1,172. Now, keep in mind, this is not taking <coughs> into account election day ballots. This is only vote by mail and early votes. And that's what you're seeing coming around the state thus far. Because, I mean, they were reporting uh, Broward County probably 20, 30 minutes before the public closed. Yeah, yeah. They have... Uh, you can, um, a lot of times you'll see exit polls or you'll see, you know, you can actually, we can go and look at turnout uh, because we have the electronic poll books. We kind of got off that subject earlier, but when you go in now, you don't have to take an ink pen and they hunt for your name in a book and sign that anymore. We, uh, uh, we actually were able to upgrade to electronic poll books. So it scans your driver license, it pulls your voter information up immediately right there in front of the poll clerk. You sign with your finger now, which I'm not sure that that's great for your for how pretty of signature you make. However, that's besides the point at the moment. They, uh, they verify you are who you are by your driver license. The machine does it all. And the great thing about that is, is it automatically I'm not sure how often, every 10, 15, 20 minutes, it updates on the Supervisor of Elections website so you can see live data on voter turnout and you can break it down by precinct and by party. So, I saw one earlier that it even had a breakdown by male versus female. Um, 
Yes, you get dem yes, you can get demogra demographics. Yes, yep, absolutely, you can. Um, and it is always interesting to look at demographics um, after an election. Uh, everything's done. You pull the demographics, and it, it breaks it down by age. It breaks it down by location, precinct, uh, party, um, male, female, and you can look at those and see. Sometimes you can see trends on what was the motivation, or you may wonder what was the motivation for that particular demographic. That's why there was a poll that came out Sunday <clears throat> talking about the top ten priorities of voters. Two were basically the same. One was um, the economy, the other was um, inflation. They're tied to one another. Um, but interesting enough, this is probably for blend together and averaged out. Guess what the number 10 item was for voters in the state of Florida? I'm going to assume it was not Coca-Cola. The, the number 10 item was going to be the number one <laughs> campaign item of abortion. Exactly. Abortion, yeah. And the second one, I forget what the second one was, but it's one of them that they have been touting. Yeah. 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 If that's all you have to stand on, don't tell me that. It is very interesting to look at um, state and national candidates. Uh, I really enjoy presidential primaries when you see so many candidates and they're trying to appeal to such a broad base. Now, when they can go home to their district, their precinct, their local county, they know what those voters want to hear. They know know what their platform needs to be but when you take them out of their comfort area and you put them across a uh, an entire state or you put them across an entire country and they have to rely on advisors polls statistics a campaign manager or somebody to tell them what their platform is it's really interesting to see how sometimes you can tell how genuine they are and really how noble they are subject and I, I really enjoy seeing that part of those candidates really kind of pulled out of their comfort zone because sometimes it's very revealing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and don't put them on the spot. <laughs> if it's not written <laughs> down, they don't know how to respond. Well, mm -hmm. in politics, no elected official slash politician ever wants to be put on the spot. But somebody will throw you that question that's a lose-lose question, you know. Do you like making out with your sister? There's not a winning answer there. You know, I, wish, I wish you might see Gene's face. <laughs> but somebody is going to pose one of those questions to you that puts you on the spot that no matter how you answer it, it's not going to be real great. You mean know? like kind of, do you still beat your wife? Those kind of questions, yes. Those I mean, kind of questions are, yeah. You can't answer You can't them answer without getting what, into trouble. Yeah. yeah. And the, the interesting thing, too, Baby's always right. Don't put her in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> in in the world of serving as an elected official, no matter on um, every decision you make, there's always somebody on both sides of that decision. There's always a few that think maybe it wasn't the right choice, and always a few that thinks maybe it was the right choice. And sometimes you have to make that unpopular decision. That is for sure. You have to to be able to sleep good at night. You have to know. I made it because I felt that was the right choice for everyone, whether they understood it or not. And if they give me the opportunity, I'll explain that to them and why I made that choice. You know, um, <coughs> one of the best pieces of advice I was given when early on serving in elected office, I was told, make every decision as if you're going to have to defend it in court. And that sunk in my mind, and I never forgot it. That was the best piece of advice I was ever given, because if I'm going to make it, I'm going to be sure that I can defend it. I might still be wrong. I'm not going to say I'm never wrong. I might still be wrong, but at least I can defend why I need that. Let's go back to one thing on the local. The Republican Party, Republican Party, Republican Party, yeah, that's that's a good a good point. And and it, this may have been discussed while he's doing that. This may have been discussed while I was out, Ty. But um, was there any 
local city elections in Zolphone or Bowling Green, if you have any? Uh, all ours, ours was settled by Okay, okay, okay. And uh, Zolphone did have an election, I believe it was last Monday, and Dee Dee White was elected. Okay. And yeah. She, she served before. Okay. Okay. So, on the referendum, uh, keep in mind this is early vote and vote by mail ballots. Um, we're at uh, yes of 1,808 and no at 1,698. Pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, okay explain that. To so maybe, or maybe, or did you already? No, but okay. Sam's the per Sam has served on that board okay, before, and I don't know if he currently does, but he has no. served on the board before. I went off with the change of governors. Oh, but, okay. um, and that was because I was serving at the pleasure of the previous governor. Understand. Uh, beyond then they're done that. Beyond, Different board. Yeah. Well, beyond the statutory limits. And whenever yeah. he went out of office, that letter expired. Right. But um, this uh, ballot was put to the voters to determine whether they wanted to continue funding that Indian health care board. Um, it's $550,000 out of the Warren dollars to our local tax uh, payers. Uh, and that's all that it can ever create or generate, uh, roughly around 500000 can be paid to today at the health uh, for those residents that have the ability to pay. So they're not finding other sources for lack of better living from this insurance. Okay. So um, it's been long overdue for the, view the voters to revisit this. Uh, I forget how many years ago it was created, but it was created to keep our hospitals open when there were not those other government taxpayer sources. Uh, Party Memorial Hospital is at, at risk of closing at that time. So times have changed. There's other, other sources of funding. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the taxpayer that's funding it. So let them have the choice. Okay, hey guys, I want to break in there for okay. just a minute. We have, um, we now have four six out of 12 reporting. And I'll go back to the statewide races that's, that's here. But let's first, let's take a look at the local school board race. I know that's the one that everybody here locally is trying to keep an eye on. I'm scrolling down to find it. There we go. So right now we have early vote, vote by mail, and four precincts. And Marie Dasher is at 1,912, and Gary McWhorter is at 1,595. So it's 54 to 45 percent. 54 to 45 percent. Okay, and, uh, okay. <coughs> and that's with how many reporting? Four precincts. Four precincts. All early votes and all vote by mail. Okay. okay. Now, if we want to go back and look at, obviously. Um, you know, this county leans red, so Marco Rubio, Scott Franklin, Ron DeSantis, Ashley Moody, Jimmy Patronus, Wilton Simpson, Ben Albritton are all leading in those races overwhelmingly. Now, I, I'm seeing something here on um, the state radio. They're putting a check mark on Marco Rubio. Yeah, that's, I think that's been pretty, pretty well. Yeah, uh, Val Deming is at around 45, so a significant swap there. That's not very close. But you're, you're talking, yeah, that's not a point or two, that's 10. In the summer, I would tell you, the average person were in the email for that. Now, that would be close to what this is, and there, and and I, and I noticed that they had already placed the check mark, and that's significant because usually they won't let put that check mark up there unless it's. And I'm, I'm told that um, like five to six cars just pulled up at um, the supervisor of elections office, so okay. we should be getting some new stuff out momentarily. All right, and we'll try to confirm that if uh, that that is a victory for Marco Rubio. That's what it's looking like. We're trying to find out here. So, um, you know what we need tonight? We I, I should have <coughs> dug out. Chet did this for me about five years ago. I had a bunch of 
Uh, Dan Rather. Uh, <laughs> I come across those not this, long this, this race is spinning across a uh, hot and feel like a wagon. <laughs> oh, this race is hotter than walking through a furnace at a kerosene suit. <laughs> Kerosene, dark kerosene. They got a hold of some Gene Davis's goat slick. Yeah, these were all things that he said during like the 2000 presidential. This was not part of a sailor walking through a furniture. Chad, I wish you had brought those. I might be able to look those up here shortly. But uh, more importantly, though, but if if that's if that's so, I mean, it, the rules just as close. A lot of times, the state. you know, Fox 13, uh, or I guess Fox in general is calling DeSantis, you know, calling the race for DeSantis really? also, yes. Um, a lot of those are based upon voter early votes okay. and based upon um, exit polling and polling data leading up to election. So... You know, they're they're usually pretty confident. I have seen before in the past a yeah. few times a state get pulled back in a presidential election. It happened, like I remember, that. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. But for the most part, it's pretty rare. Most, you know, fit with all the race. Also, I'm seeing that uh, U.S. <coughs> House Representative Anna Paulina Luna. Uh, looks like she has won her race. And that's coming to us from Newsmax as well. And, and I, I don't know much about that um, particular district or, or where she's. Okay, maybe that's uh, where she, she's looking. So, in the area. There are some that have been just because of looking. Well, she, <laughs> it's tough. She, she's, a, she's not bad looking. She's easy on the eyes, that's for sure. Okay, so, I mean, you know. Um, some of this may not take as long as we thought. I mean, I'm sure in other states that's a, you know, that's a different story. But I, I, I heard um, on the television that some state, I didn't catch which one it was, said they won't have theirs resolved for two to three days. And that's a, that's just really why wow. that that is awful. Because I mean, you go back. I remember I, the first the first presidential election that I can remember very well, and I was really interested in it for whatever reason. Was a 1984 case between Mondell and Reagan, you know, and of course all the, the local races were in that as well. That was in 1984, and they knew the same night. I mean, you know, it might have been midnight, but they knew. Well, here we are, 40 years later, and we've gone backwards. This is ridiculous. Well, let's first over here, Gene. How long did it take you to watch the president? <laughs> Gee, Gene, rough audience. Gene, let me let me save you there for a minute. We got a six precincts reporting. Okay, and we have uh, that that trend seems to be sticking pretty through uh, that we've seen so far. Marie Dasher is uh, two thousand two hundred sixty two with fifty four percent, and Gary McWhorter is at one thousand eight hundred and fifty two at forty five percent. So it's fifty four to forty five percent at the moment. Okay. All right. So it hasn't changed much. Then, it, in the the percentage-wise hasn't changed. We've got more votes in, but it right. seems to be kind of trending, kind of kind of similar of what we've seen and all night. There is one or two precincts that they could swap. Absolutely, swap. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can tell which precincts are as reported, but largest precinct would be uh, New Hope. Uh, I think that's precinct six, and the second largest is uh, precinct twelve, which is. Uh, at the Armory. And I think the third largest is Ona, and I think that's Precinct 5, if I remember from okay. the top of my head. Those are pretty large precincts. And, you know, and, no, there was a new one this year. Uh, they moved one in Ona. Ona. They did move. Mm -hmm. At Go Badger, I believe. It was. Yes. You know, y'all were talking about Gary earlier. You know, he's a, he's a landmark at Ace. Y'all were giving him credit for Pete. Well, he uh, but he has another great talent. Okay, what's that? Cutting key. Oh, back in the day when they didn't have all this high thing on the yeah, 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 yeah. He always cut your key. It always worked. Because he's mentioned on the ads for Vision Ace Hardware, uh, water and paints. Yep. See, 
I listen to those commercials. You should. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, you know, I buys your Whopper. Yeah, absolutely. And to, and to surprise the many, I this is actually I listen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see what else we got here. Um, some other uh, numbers that may have come in from across the, the area. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I have the. Uh the Florida Election Watch <coughs> website up, which is the uh, uh, put out by the Division of Elections of the state of Florida. Uh, the Marco Rubio Val Demings race, Marco Rubio is at 56% and Val Demings is at 42. Now, that's a total of 6,393,000 ballots cast. Has the uh, I-4 corridor come in yet? I don't know yet. Um, let me see if I can get, let me see if I can find out where these are from. Because you know, Jeff, what the I-4 corridor can and can't do. Okay, this, uh, this just in, I mean, and, uh, this this just in from our uh, our, our news headquarters, uh, townhall.com. They're on the race for Marco to win his race. Wow. Yeah. This is early. Mm-hmm. Along with uh, Luna, um, I don't know where just leave the last name up there, but anyway. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you for digging me out of that hole. <laughs> I took myself. Uh, you know, Ruby, and that's, and that's funny. You know, I can see his last name, but we've heard him mentioned so much in the news that you know, you know what I mean? Marco Rubio, you know, the, the name, it's a household name. Yes. You know, he came to the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's not invisible. Right, right, and I don't know, and I, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade or any way here, but I didn't, and he might have been around, but I did not see Charlie Chris in the area, anywhere in this area. I mean, he might have went to okay. Fort Myers or somewhere after the hurricane, but I didn't see him in this part of Florida. Speaking of that race, we're we're currently the state of the Division of Elections of uh, the state of Florida is saying that. Currently, where uh, DeSantis is 57.96, so almost 58 percent. Wow. And Chris is 41 percent. I, I happen to know where uh, DeSantis can get uh, Charlie and Bella Hayes so we can go down the pasture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, talking about uh, uh, Charlie, this guy started out, I guess, in politics in Petersburg. I believe yes. he was like mayor over there. And then somehow, I don't know if he went straight from mayor to governor. Did he, did he go somewhere? But anyway, he being governor. And Cruz probably cruel. Yeah, yeah. And, and looked at, there was a time when he was viewed pop, in popular light by the party that he's now going against. Yes, definitely. Definitely. You know, if you go yeah. back and you look at some of his video, which is easy to do on YouTube nowadays. Of him, and back in 2000, I don't know, 10, 2011, whatever it was that he was, you know, governor, was that around that time, or, or somewhere there? Yeah. In that and you hear him speak then, and you hear him, some of the stuff that he has said during this campaign now, night and day. Night and day. Not Definitely. even like, you know. You know, it's kind of <clears> tough. <throat> it's kind of tough when you're, uh, you're in a position like governor, because typically the governor works very, very closely with the state party that they're affiliated with. So sure. obviously Democrat, Democrat Party, Republican, Republican Party. And they typically they have staff. A lot of times uh, folks who work for the governor's office may have probably worked for the party before mm -hmm. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And um, I know from some personal knowledge of some things that when Chris decided to leave the Republican Party, the Republican Party may have used some some issues campaigning against him that was quite interesting. You know, obviously they they knew his schedule, they mm -hmm. knew his preferences, mm -hmm. they knew his finances mm -hmm. and stuff better than anybody. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, now, that's did he quite, change quite his, interesting. A party affiliate in office for the, for yeah. the independent. Yeah. 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 Shortly before the primary, 
I and, believe so, yeah. That's, because that's he, why the legislature created the Charter right. School. Right. Because he knew, that's, that's right. correct, because he knew that he was not, I mean, the, the writing was on the wall. He wasn't going to be able to beat Mar, uh, Marco Rubio in a primary. So he well, switched. Um, I don't know much about this particular race. This is from Alabama, but I'm, I'm guessing most of us have watched uh, Republican uh, Katie Bright has won Alabama for U.S. Senate. So there's another pickup there. Um, and I, what I'm looking for here, and of course time will tell, but it, it kind of, from what, I'm, from what I'm seeing here from our, our news headquarters at townhall.com, the, per, per, uh, the predictions may have been... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. JJ, I want to cut in yeah, here. We have, in. Uh, we have eight precincts reporting. And like I say... I'll cut straight to the school board race. The local school board race is what everybody's really paying attention to here locally. Uh, Marie Dasher is at 55% and Gary Water is at 45%. So she's expanded that lead a little bit. Okay. All right. And that is eight precincts reported. Out of 12. 12. Okay. All right. But we'll keep an eye on that. And I'm still surfing over here for our emails to see if we've gotten anything. Um, you know, if, if we take a look at... Um, Attorney General on, okay, a, sta- yes. on a statewide okay. race. Ashley Moody is is uh, 59.49% compared to the the other the other folks at uh, 40%. I'm not that, quite sure how to pronounce that name, but basically 60 to 4. These are close. These are these not, I'm these seeing are, are significant. And, that, and that's right on track with the poll that I saw yes. yesterday. She was 19% ahead. Yeah. Chief Chief Financial Officer, Jimmy Petronas, 58.26 to uh, 58% to 1%. Senior level. Um, Ag Commissioner, uh, 58% to 41%. So that trend uh, down that party line it seems is. to be Big running time. very strong on all these and that was, races. Uh, Will uh, uh, Wilson, Wilson, Simpson. Wilson Simpson, good guy, good yeah. guy. Yeah. And I really thought that he'd have a little bit greater margin. Well, that ain't, that's not bad. It's not bad, but I just thought it might be shaped more. <clears throat> well, how many? Uh, how how far is that race from being declared over? I'm I'm not sure at this okay. point. Let me get his lead may widen, but I mean that's you know. Looks like uh, total precincts reporting is 66%. So okay. we're a little more than halfway through. And I, I know we've talked about this, and now we get the word that Ron DeSantis has been elected governor again, and I don't think that's probably a surprise. Wow. Oh, that was, I'm, I'm you know. shocked at that one. <laughs> I thought you would be, Gene. Oh. Get, get some cold water and put on Gene. He's yeah. having a <laughs> panic attack. I tell you. You know, we were talking earlier. I'm going to go back to a subject that we were talking about earlier you know here in hardy county we have 12 precincts and we were talking about when the when the polls close that the clerk has to do her her shutdown procedures and drive the card in and the voted ballots everything manually has to come in Mm -hmm. now in a larger county think about broward think about orange county think about some of those uh, hillsburg Um, i personally have been in orange county on election night and sat in their canvassing boardroom and watched how it works and it's just it's just it's, it's amazing. Uniform. It is absolutely amazing. They have two hundred and thirty something precincts. You can't have two hundred and thirty something clerks driving in. Right. You, know, you don't that have a parking yeah, spot yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah. it. So they have to transfer their data electronically back to the office. And then every obviously, again, we've mentioned before that we're a paper based system. So if there was some glitch somewhere, it could always refer back to the paper voted ballot. So uh, a countywide election in Orange County the night that I was there, they had everything in and everything reported and everything pushed out to their website in 14 minutes. Because at the precinct, they only have to wrap up and send the results back. As soon as the results come back, it automatically can go up to the website. 14 minutes, 200 and some precincts. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I also understand with them, they are not actually tied to the web until the are closed. That way there's no room for interference. So your mm-hmm. election management software can never be tied to the web. It's it's isolated completely. 
Um, each county um, uh, has their own rules and procedures that's approved by the Division of Elections. So I can't speak for specifics in other counties, but in Hardy County, there's a small room off in the hallway that election management software is in. It looks like a couple of servers set up there and a computer screen and a keyboard and a mouse and a desk. And it's pretty, pretty blank and boring looking in there. But that machine is completely isolated from the internet, never connected to the internet, never has connections to the internet. It is solely for tabulating that, uh, those results as they come in from precincts. And there's, you know, you, you'd have to physically get to that machine to hack that machine. You know, so that's just another step of security for, for that reason. Now, in some of the larger counties, um, they would have some similar practice, but again, everything could be tailored to their, their size, their procedures, their equipment, their room. I will tell you, when I went up there, I've been up there multiple times with Bill Cowles, supervisor of elections in Orange County, great friend of mine, um, was definitely a mentor to me. Um, he would take me around the office and show me stuff. Now, their room where they package and mail absentee ballots is larger than our entire supervisor of elections office. He doesn't even have a key to go in there. Only people that work in that room has a key. He had to get somebody to come and swipe their card for us to go in there. And all that's logged. Who walks in the room? Who walks out of the room? All this kind of good stuff. Everything's under camera there. Um, just impressive, impressive to uh, see an operation of that size. Well, you know, <clears throat> around the state of Florida, I feel very confident with our election process. Um, well, I have a problem with the first like, photo of I discovered the photo. photo. Um, you know, we've seen before where people try to vote in multiple areas. Definitely. And the system catches it. Definitely. Hey, they, they're, they're better than the lottery was last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have 10 precincts reporting, and I'm scrolling down, hunting for that race that everybody's looking for. We have 10 precincts reporting. Vote by mail and early voting is reporting. We're still waiting on two additional precincts, but we're uh, Marie Dasher's at 55%, Gary's at 44 so that, that trend is still holding, holding steady there. Um, at this moment, it is definitely possible things could change, but... I would say is consistent as we have seen this all evening. It'll probably it'll probably continue that trend through the last two precincts. But we'll wait and see. Uh, they should be in momentarily. And they know how many mail in ballots are still out. Uh, there are, what seventy two hours from the beginning of the overseas ballots going through there. Overseas ballots, yes. If there's any military overseas ballots um, that were postmarked prior to today, can be accepted up to. Seven days, I think, past the election cycle. Oh, There's a certain time. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and it is, uh, it is usually singular digits, you oh, know. Yes. So, um, unless you have a really mm -hmm. close race, usually is not going to make a difference. Now, you also got to think about provisional ballots. I know in precinct twelve, I asked, and I think she had three. I uh, probably voted about four thirty. She had three provisional ballots. So. If you're sitting at home and you're wondering what is a provisional ballot, so let's say I go in and I want to vote, and they say for whatever reason I don't show you as a registered voter, um, or I show you in another precinct, or for whatever reason, and I make a demand that I want to vote. No, I'm a registered voter. I definitely am a registered voter. I want to vote. Okay, you'll have to vote a provisional ballot. You get to cast your ballot like anybody else. Vote it. Bring it back. Put it in an envelope with your name, your voter registration number. Nobody looks at it. It's, you know, you can slide it in there secretly. Um, that goes back to the canvassing board, which is sitting at the Supervisor of Elections office right now in a, in a open public meeting. They'll look at the, they'll look at the name. They'll have the staff. Uh, who knows what the canvassing board chairman, which would be Judge Horton, who knows what Judge Horton may ask a staff member, hey, can you go pull the registration? Can you pull their voting history? Can you pull their address? All that, inf whatever information he feels like the, the canvassing board would need to justify whether, yes, we, we made a mistake. They are a registered voter. They should have been, uh, and, and then that they would vote, and that board would uh, vote yes to accept that or no, not to accept that. So there'd be a, a vote on every provisional ballot that's cast across the county, too. And, you know, they take that very serious. I, very I much so. Many times. How the state 
Starting scoring. We are, um, thank you, Russell Melinda. He says, uh, we're sounding good over here. And I think that's probably because of Gene. <laughs> Gene's got us sounding good over here. So. All right. Uh, let's see. We have, um, statewide, we're looking at 67% uh, turnout. Total of 6,611,372 votes cast um, at this moment is uh, what the Division of Elections is saying. These are broke down by county. If you want to see these, go to FloridaElectionsWatch.gov. And on that website, which is provided by the Florida Division of Elections, you can look at any statewide race um, from uh, senator, representative, governor, all the statewide. You can even look at um, multi-county or district races, state attorneys, oh, state senate, okay. representative, okay. special districts. You can look at judicial offices, Supreme Court, District of Appeals, Circuit Court. All of these are on their website. All of these are broken down by county, really? broken down by turnout, um, percentages, vote um, by mail. Okay. I mean, there's, there's an yeah, overload of information here if you want to look at uh, something specific on a state statewide basis. Now, Gene, were you wanting to uh, hear a particular race? Okay. All right, well, come on back. Well, let's say the okay. House, right. well, even in this district, the House has been over it. Let me see if I can get that up. Give me just a moment. We'll get that up, and uh, we'll go over that. And the governor's pretty well decided already. Governor seems to be, seems to be pretty... I mean, if you're seeing uh, news channels calling that race, I would say that that's probably pretty. Let you call that one to be pretty safe. Yeah, I would. I would say no, so. Absolutely. <clears throat> Fox 13 called it. It's pretty safe. I wonder if Chris likes alfalfa. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs some score. Let me be doing the news. Uh, out of parties. What um Sam you voted you voted today or did you vote early? No, I was early. You were an early voter, okay. Okay. You know, with what I went through three years ago, ended up in the hospital and everything going on. The vote is too important to miss. I'm gonna take the chance to make sure it counts. You're right, you're right. <clears throat> you know, that's another great thing about Florida. We make it so easy to vote here. If you get registered, you're a registered voter, you have an opportunity to vote by your mailbox. You can you can literally get your ballot sent to you. You can cast your ballot and send it back and never have to leave your house. Exactly. You can come and vote early. Now, statute says there's a day that supervisor of elections can start early voting, and then there's a minimum day that they must start early voting. So it depends on county, but you can have, uh, you have at minimum a week, you know, to early vote. I think it's uh, maybe seven up to ten days or something up to 14 days, something like that, um, that you can early vote. Or if you're a traditionalist, and I know folks who feel that a ways, you know, I want to go out on election day and cast that ballot at my precinct. You can do that also. You know. um, Gene, back to your question. <coughs> on a state um, district wide basis here is what I'm going to give you. This is uh, Ben Albritton at 70% compared to his opponent at 29%. Does that give you percentage as far as what's reporting? Um, this particular page doesn't, but it looks like um, it gives me numbers by county and I don't know what percentage of total that is. But let's I think go. The people in Florida and this district, they like what it does so far the time that he's been in the Senate. And in fact, come next year, he'll be. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's going to be great. He's working well. He's yes, he has. He's done good. Florida County can be proud. Exactly. Yeah, and he's, a, he's a good friend. He's originally a Bowling Green boy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he, he slid down the one tool. So I'm uh, I'm being told that you know some folks are the uh, some.
for the folks who have been inside watching the canvassing board meeting has now come outside. Um, that's probably a pretty good indication that right now the website says we have 10 precincts out of 12 reporting, but um, it probably will take less than five or 10 minutes until they get those results mm -hmm. up and published out here. So we should have, uh, we should have probably everything we need to know here shortly as far as Harvey County is concerned. Okay. Uh, so exactly where I was heading. At the moment, we are 52% uh, for yes for approval and 47% uh, for no rejection. That's pretty close, but yeah. still yeah. Probably we'll continue that trend. Being only two precincts left, probably we'll continue that trend. Let me see if I can tell what precincts are waiting. And you know, that's what I think the people voted without a lot of information. You know, there was no campaign. I, I, keep, I don't know. I just, I didn't see a lot or hear a lot. I mean, we did, we did uh, for governor, obviously. We saw Charlie Chris commercials. We saw uh, Ron DeSantis commercials. But locally, I mean, I'm not saying we see a lot of those commercials on TV, but I didn't see the, the, the signs out. I didn't see vote yes on amendment two or vote no on it. I didn't see any of that stuff. I mean, you know, I'm, I, you're right. I didn't see the signs like no, you typically see. No. I didn't hear the stuff mm -hmm. that you would typically hear. No. We, we here at the station had sent out mailers to candidates yeah. and asked them for uh, an interview. Not. Uh, nothing. Ads. Offered ads. It's just this was one of the, at least here locally, one of the quietest elections I can ever recall. But, but a great turnout. But the motivation was there and the numbers Absolutely. are showing that. And we're looking at the numbers that, uh, that's been trending all night long, all evening. Uh, the motivation was definitely there. People you know, got out voting. Can you tell anything about the percentage of the Hardy County registered voters that turned out to vote thus far? Yes, we can go back and look at the general numbers. Yeah, just numbers earlier. I'm not sure. Um, Which is a good turnout for the county. We're at 41.19% yeah. currently. Uh, 13,428 registered voters. Um, we had 5,531 at this moment cast a ballot. We're we're waiting for a couple of precincts left. Callie says she's thinking uh, maybe 8 and 10 uh, as far as precinct numbers. Okay. Maybe 8 and 10 is what we're waiting on. Um, but anyway, we should probably have those out pretty quickly, I would think. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking around and, you know, I'm surprised that, that uh, on, a, on a national level, I'm not seeing anything in our, our feed here from townhall.com. Anything about Georgia? I'm seeing South Carolina, some, some, some stuff from South Carolina. I suspect Georgia is going to be very close. I'm not seeing anything from Georgia. I'm not seeing anything from. Um, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pennsylvania is another one that uh, the Senate seat in Pennsylvania. Yeah, but it is yeah. so highly publicized. Yes, I mean, with yes. Uh, the debate was mm. interesting. Yeah. Now, with Georgia, that's probably going to be a contested race. Probably well, they'll so. have a runoff. It'll be but, close I mean, enough. I, not even any runoff. numbers is what I'm saying. I haven't seen any even numbers. I mean, like, you, you'll get these numbers and one candidate will be up and then half an hour or later, they're down next Under, I see anything. I'm seeing from uh, Channel 8 that uh, Marco Rubio is addressing his supporters in Miami. Okay. Currently. And I also see him I see Charlie Chris is over at your press conference as well. His supporters <laughs> and I. And I'm guessing that's probably like he was for, that's where he was kind of running things from, I believe. Yeah, wasn't the government going to be? I believe All right. so. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm being told. What's that says completely reported. All right, we got 12 out of 12 completely reported. In Hardy? In Hardy County. Okay, here we go. We're going to scroll down here and find the race that everybody has uh, been looking for and paying attention to, and that's a school board member, District 4. Marie Dasher is at 2,790. That's 55%. To Gary McWaters, 2,264 at 44%. So, that trend did hold through that we have seen all evening. Um, Marie Dasher has won that race, according to the Supervisor of Elections website. <coughs> These are unofficial results. Um, they won't be certified until after uh, that time frame that Sam was talking about uh, for overseas military ballots. So 
You'll have a certification uh, down the road by the canvassing board, but these are 12 out of 12, completely reported. Election days reported, early votes are reported, vote by mail is reported. Um, we ended up with a 41.14% turnout, a 41% turnout, 5,527 ballots cast here in Hardy County. Okay. And, you know, we may have lost a few voters because of Ian, you know, as far as who this plays mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. They this didn't, is really, for sure. didn't really vote in the amount in the county to have physically voted. That's right. That's but right. That's really a fairly decent turnout. I'd love to always see more. That is not a bad turnout for yeah, a, no, a mid-election. No, mid yeah. When we were here two years ago for the 2020 election, I think the number was far lower. And, and that was a big race because you had Donald Trump and you had Joe Biden. You know, there was a lot, lot of, you know, stir in there about that. And, we were, and, and I don't remember we saying anyway, the numbers were a lot lower than what we're seeing today. And that's what, that's what I went and looked at to see how many registered voters there were in Hardy County. And that's when I discovered there was around 13,000 or so mm -hmm. registers. And I think yeah, I, I, it was somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000. I thought that was terrible. Out of 13,000, you get 3,000 people. But we brought them out today. You know, something that I would like to see for Hardy County that I saw in the news before I came down here is the 18 to 28 year old group is probably the lowest turnout nationwide. All these votes are going to affect them the rest of their life. Yeah. yeah. All us old people, <laughs> <laughs> we have fewer years to work. <laughs> and I didn't bring you none of the bus. No, no, because I mean, I'm a, I'm a lot older than I was when I started. And, you know, so, uh, <laughs> It, yeah, you know, I, 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 gave, I told that earlier. I was, 1994 was the first year I could vote, and I know it is since. But um, yeah, it, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I mean, that was like I couldn't wait to get down there to vote. I mean, that was I was, you know, went to the post office, get signed up for let's select the service and register to vote. So that was, the, yeah, sir. Go ahead. Six, Sixty-five percent turnout in the general election in 20. Absolutely. Oh, but it's hard to compare a midterm election to a general presidential Absolutely. election. Year, Absolutely. You know, I still am confident that 41% was a pretty decent turnout for, for us. Let me go back and see if I can see uh, a little bit further back. Is there anything we can pull up to show, you know, the red versus the blue in other states? You know, that's where everybody's kind of there. Well, that's all. Well, then, then that's what I was talking about too. I'm not seeing anything over here. 2018 was 52 percent. Really? So, okay. You know, I would say we're we're right I've been where we've been. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> we all have. But no, usually we're seeing some shade in the. The, the map, and, and I'm not even seeing a map over here. On I, I just got a comment here on Facebook from uh, uh, Randy Meek. Okay. He said to let everybody know that he's a write in candidate in Kentucky. Okay. Now, he didn't specify what seat he was running for. Oh, well. Um, Charlie Goat Wrangler. Goat Wrangler. He's a coon chaser. Coon chaser. Well, if, okay. I, was, if okay. I was voting for him, I would, I would take, should take Mitch McConnell's place. That's what I <laughs> and, and the thing is, does he have a shirt on? You know, that's always Where questionable. Have that? It's always questionable. <laughs> you know, with Randy. <laughs> but I am glad he's listening to yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. Randy, uh, he chimed us. in. Um, we heard, I, I saw uh, where he was living um, to, to one of the football games a few Fridays ago. Uh, up there, he was listening in. I tell you what, we, we miss having him around. Yeah. But I'm glad he's up there enjoying uh, retirement yeah, kickback in uh Doing a lot of doing a lot of activities up there that I enjoy seeing his Facebook page. He shares with everybody. It's it's uh, it's great to keep up with Randy. Yeah. Well, and, and he, he he also uh, his pictures. We were we were we were playing around looking for pictures from the station city birthday. We wanted some pictures from, and he's the one that you got those pictures from, right? If I recall right, I believe um, so. I, yeah. I think you're right. I think he's the one that 
So if if, if so Randy, if, if that was you, let Chad know. But I, I believe it was. You got found with some pictures from uh, 1966, I think, at the station. Statewide. I can't wait to see him on the uh, Moonshiners channel. <laughs> <laughs> This, and this is Sam Fine, our color commentator uh, for the evening here. The happy hey, football, why not here? I'm right. really appreciative. Sam drove all the way down here from Bowling Green to join us this evening. And I'll fall off bears with a loose sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. 85% reported in statewide. That's getting pretty close. Yeah, yeah. That's... And once again, here it is, uh, 15 minutes away from 9 o'clock. And the whole kit and caboodle here in Florida is about done. Yeah. Uh, now, if we go out some of these other states, we might be there three days from now. One and, some of these, and some of these closed at 7 o'clock at 7 o'clock that's because correct. they're in one time zone. And I think that just goes to complement the division of elections yeah, from the state of Florida, mm -hmm. the leadership that we have in the state of Florida um, up there. The division of elections falls under the Secretary of State. And uh, they, all the way down to your local supervisor of elections, your precinct worker, everybody who has worked to make today possible, we'll give them a big thank you and a compliment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for all the hard work. And today when I was over there at the, the, the city center voting, and I uh, thank the ladies that were there, the gentlemen were there by the door, and um, uh, I think I won his vote because I held the door open. Uh, like so. Lunch in his hand. So Mr. Sure right. Benny Boone, I believe, is, who is that he okay? Yeah, very great nice guy. Man. Great yep, guy. Yep, Wonderful yep. personality. Yep. Okay, so and Randy said yes. Those were from him. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Randy. I, I, we still have them, and, and we even um, made a digital copy of it because they're very important to us around here. Um, so we all saw the commercials on TV over and over. We saw Val Dennings, former cop in Orlando. Um, I, I heard her name a lot over the years. My sister lives in Orlando. Um, she really, I think, pushed her, her main talking point or campaign was Marco Rubio's, or what she said was his opinion on abortion. Okay? That's what I heard out of her most. Abortion, abortion, abortion. Did you right. watch her debate? No, I did not. Okay, I did um, and we'll, we'll get that in a moment. Uh, sure. If that didn't seem to be the trigger, I think it's the economy. You're right. I, I think that's probably a perfect race. But I, I have other examples that show what the motivation was in economy. We've said this. We've said this all evening. Mm -hmm. Economy yep. seems to be the driving and the motivating factor today, even for folks. This is a this is another example of folks who we're talking about this being relatively a quiet election cycle, but very motivated election. Um, that I think proves our point that this affects everybody, mm -hmm. not just the ones who have a platform or an agenda to push. This affects everybody. This yeah. affects yeah. the food yeah. that's on their table. It yeah. affects their wallet every mm -hmm. week. It affects what their expenses are at the grocery store. And so they that was the to best, push which ones to pay. That was the best campaign you could have uh, as yeah. you could have run was you know, mm -hmm. hitting some people in the wallet or hitting people in the wallet. Right. I mean, some at all, but I mean, to the economy and um, some teams that was made from the lawyers who right. right. And he said that. That was something Chris was Ron DeSantis went back to the White House. I think that's really, really pick up this is momentum. And that's where it started. Then through the old school, I'm thinking stacked up. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of dominoes that fell at the right time, and he happened to be on the right side of them, right? 
as it was going along. Yes, yeah, I absolutely. He said when he when he was here, um, he was talking about repairing the things. He said, "Help me." Bridges some time. They were all, it was going to be months before that. It was about a week ago. And that's not the only thing, a bridge that's been real. Um, and not and that thing's done. You found the rehashing that Bob Shane the other day with the school issue with Servplay. Mm-hmm. They were getting stung on. Yes. The governor intervened yes. and helped pull it out of the window. Mm-hmm. That comes from leadership. It does. And it didn't ju- he didn't just start doing it in the middle of the crisis. He had been leading before. This was just another step for him, and he followed through. I mean, it's about a career with the military. Yeah. You know, you don't get there by being right. me. <laughs> right. I mean, it's one, it's one thing to, to show up in the middle of a disaster and you've been maybe leading kind of all along and you show up and I want this, not with that. And it just seemed to hold so much water, much water when he did it because that's kind of how he all along. He said he was doing a great job. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was a well, just at first. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, but you understand what I'm saying. And there was a, a Democrat uh, over in Palm Beach County. I believe it was the mayor. Maybe it was the mayor of uh, West Palm Beach. He got an endorsement from from a Democrat over there somewhere. And uh, you know, I, I, he's the right guy for the job. Right person for the job. I really do. Um, and you know, I wasn't maybe totally sure at first back when. First came to be, but I'm sold now. After what after I've seen the last two years, three years, well, four years. And, you know, any elected official, it doesn't matter if you're a municipal elected or the president. When you first get there, you're in the flame. Sure. You don't really know your role. You don't know what you can or can't do. You've got to get your feet wet and start moving ahead. I think he handled the test very well. He passed the test. That's yeah, what absolutely. I mean. Absolutely. Is he perfect? No. no. But I mean, but, He's, and, and, and when I see some of the, the shenanigans that are going on in some of these other states, when it comes to all sorts of things, he seems to be hitting the mark right. JJ, you were you mentioned Georgia yes. earlier. So we got 51% of expected votes counted. Now, this is from BBC.com. Okay. okay. 51% counted. Warnock is at 50%. Okay. And Walker's at 48%. So that's pretty close. That's pretty close <coughs> now, to that race. Now, uh, 50%, does that win it for you in Georgia? Or do you know? Um, I don't I know what the make, cutoff I hit is. A certain number we there. Do, because if not, it, all, it goes to an automatic runoff. Now, how, how so Georgia is, uh, I'm not quite sure. I have studied enough to understand what the trigger mechanism okay. is there. Now, how many of the precincts are they got? They got a lot more counties than we have here. That's for sure. They got like 130. I'm I'm not sure. This okay. this just come through that just changed and updated. It said 52 percent of expected votes counted. Okay. So I'm not sure you know how, how what they're basing that off of, but 50 uh, percent to 48 percent. More next. The question is, has it been ransom reported? <laughs> I mean, that's the majority. Yeah. Of your well, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. But then you know, you know how social media is and. Um, there, there was, there, there were these top of people, memes, memes. I think memes uh, coming out that um, um, famed psychic uh, Miss Cleo <laughs> had predicted a water main break tomorrow morning about two a.m. at the Fulton County uh, election headquarters. I, I think yeah. I saw those on somebody in this room's Facebook. Page. I think you did. <laughs> yes, yes, I believe so. Me and you must be like the same friend on the Facebook. P- Pennsylvania. Okay. I really hate to mention these numbers because only 8% is reported. So this is just, uh, I'm mentioning this just for bringing it up since we've talked about it. Fetterman is at 78% and Oz is at 19%. Now those numbers would be crazy to, to think that they would end up that <laughs> yeah. way. But this is only 8% reporting and you don't know where those come from. because. It de- definitely, <laughs> where they come from makes a difference of what part of the state they come yeah, from makes a difference in one institution. Or whether the union voted. And I, I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I see that uh, Ron DeSantis is um, getting ready to take the podium. Well, maybe not. 
the guy that was speaking walked away, and now he come back, but he's not there. Um, okay, so so where are we at here right now? We, we're at we're, we're we're sitting at the the elections here in Hardy. It's done. We're just waiting for we're those. Done here locally. Okay, done here locally. Uh, let's get the numbers for the referendum. Uh, Sam has asked about that a couple of times okay. tonight, and let's. Uh, I don't know if we did this after we reported it. I'll just refresh it. Make sure we have. Um, 2,654 for yes for approval, and 2,387 for no rejection. So the uh, approval means it's going the way January 1, right? From my understanding, yes. Yes, because the, the – and that's always the interesting thing with um, amendments and referendums is you have to look at the wording very, very carefully. This was uh, – a referendum for dissolution of the board. Right. So a vote yes is is approving to dissolve the board. Right. Yeah. So. And that board and Gene served on it as well. It's been played with keeping board members. And part of that right. is, uh, like Gene will probably echo, the board had kind of served its purpose for what it was intended. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and I, if nothing directly, I can guarantee you against our hospital. Right. Because we right. need admin help. And for sure. believe me, I'm alive and well, thanks to them. Yeah, very appreciative for them being a major part of our community. But a lot of factors have changed from the time it was created to today. Sure. So, sure. Um, and you know that that comes yeah. with uh, with growth of a community and development and technology and thing. We were talking earlier about the chalkboard. Yeah, the supervisor of the elections office, you know, and everybody misses the chalkboard, myself included, because there was a lot of uh, um, suspense sitting there watching these numbers being written up on that chalkboard. And today, we can typically have the results to you faster than somebody could get climbed up the ladder and get three precincts written up there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so. I'll go back to Gene Davis' childhood because I was there too. <laughs> but remember the old Hero Advocate chalkboard? That the election office can call there and it's right. going up there at the same time <laughs> it's going up over there. But yeah. I mean, it was community coming together. It, right. was, it was excitement. You know, you know, now with technology, folks sit at home and they look at the election results on the website, on their phone. Uh, hopefully, they're catching us at uh, 102.1 um, or if watching us on Facebook and they're getting election results. Minute by minute, you know, um, but I can recall uh, as 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 a young uh, child standing with grandparents in that parking lot that was almost shoulder to shoulder. I mean, there were no parking spots available. I mean, it was just a sea of cars and people standing out there because everybody was in tune with watching and knew that was the way to get it as fast as it could break. And there was no car going through because it was shoulder to shoulder. It was shoulder to shoulder. You couldn't get a car through there. It was like being uh, at a football game. You know, it's just take you 30 minutes to get out of there. You know, y'all mentioned a while ago about DeSantis, whenever he kind of really started going up. You know, leadership does. It starts at the top. Okay. When the leadership <laughs> of the United States up top, the train jumped the rail. DeSantis kind of disconnected from that train and kept us going when For sure. the country fell apart. Whether whether you whether you agree with some of the things that he's done or not, he has definitely not been status quo. He has no. been what he feels was the right thing that needed to be done, whether it was popular or and not. And undoubtedly, it, most of it has been right. If you look at tonight's election results, it shows that at least the majority of voters who cast a ballot in this election feels like he has done a good job and was the right decision made. You know, I understand there is definitely a, um, a segment of the population that disagrees with him, and we respect that for sure. They have that right to do so. But Everybody has their vote. That's right. That's exactly right. You, know, you can always agree to disagree, but you got to move forward. You know what, I, I, I think I wrote something about this on Facebook a while back. You know, we're in the greatest country in the world because we have the ability to have free elections, to cast a ballot that we want to cast, 
without feeling of, you know, repercussions for whatever we decide to cast it. We are supposed to have respect for each other. Now, I have some great friends who are very liberal-leaning and, and vote down that ticket and hardcore believe those things, and I have respect for them, and I will fight for their right to have that, you know, because they, they're deserving of that. And But the, the sad thing is I've seen over the years that it seems like that respect has kind of uh, eroded away, and there is more you know, let's attack the person and not de not debate positions, but let's attack the person and the individual. And unfortunately, that's politics and what it's developed into today. Well, that and there, there's too much of this. Everything's about me. And if you're against what I'm for, then you're the enemy. And that's that's what's happened, you know. We, well, and, and we disagree and become solution. enemies instead of right. still staying friends. You know, there is, uh, obviously, we're all human. We're going to disagree on things. You Absolutely. Know? And uh, we have a reason why we feel like we're in the right position, and the person who opposes us has a feeling why they feel like they're in the right position, and we have to have that respect for each other. Even though we disagree, we have the right to disagree. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think we have the, the greatest system in the world why you have seen this country be the leader of the free world because we have uh, a structure flawed, sure, you know, not perfect, but we have a structure that allows us to have free elections, elect leaders, and the majority gets their time to, you know, perform. And if the majority decides in two years or four years or whatever that they want to move in a different direction, so be it. And, and, you know, you really get a great appreciation for this country from people that have come from other places they were really from. This is very correct. And they tell you their struggles while they were there, right. the oppression of their government while they, while they were there, and then they tell you why they loved why they're here. That's right. That's exactly right. There is probably nothing that's more eye-opening than speaking to someone who grew up in Cuba. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm telling you, and, it will. And that's, yeah. and that's why I was, I'm so surprised at, and we, we've, had, we've had a lot of uh, immigration here from Venezuela. Why did they leave Venezuela? Well, they left there because it went from a, a, a free gut run governor, a, a democracy, to a socialist government. So, what makes people that are in this country that are kind of pushing that socialist agenda think these? Will come all that way, and it won't be thing here. They left. I, now, I mean, they they get they they, they, they understand. Uh, we have a customer here, our customers here here station that, that are from Venezuela, and um, they're not all they're they're not all in favor of socialism here. That's why they're here. Well, and just look at the state of Florida's numbers of rich party, mm -hmm. and we've had such an influx from other states. They left the blue and came to the red. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That says, and that could be what we see in these huge numbers tonight. I mean, like it's like I said, it's not by a couple. It's not forty forty nine. It's fifty six forty one, or you know, there is no toss of a coin. Right, right, that's right. So it's, it's very interesting to see. And, and 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 I, as I was, as I kept telling Gene, I'm you know. I know Chad has found some numbers, and he's, he's been finding some maps and stuff, and uh, of different states and so forth. Um, but uh, I, I'm wondering how that how this is holding up in other states. Those talking about Georgia, uh -huh. those those uh, percentages have pretty much flipped now. We're 49% uh, Walker and 48% Warnock. Now, Sam mentioned Atlanta. If we look at the counties around Atlanta. You're looking at, there's one county that's only 7% reported. There's other counties that see 6, 71, 70, 88. Um, quite, I'd say the majority of those counties are 50% and above reported. Really? So there? You know, and there is a pretty good handful of more rural counties that have nothing in yet. So yeah. this is definitely going to be a tight race to watch and, all evening. And, you're, and, and I know there are some counties that, one particular that I know of, 
uh, in the southeastern part of the state that has a total population of only like 10,000. So those counties are probably, probably uh, the, the towns that they do have, they're sour, are old counties. So there's probably a lot of precincts, you know, areas that may only have 100 or so people. Right, right. So that that would be understandable. What to me has never been understandable is when you're in a large urban area and they can't seem to get it right. When the state of Florida has a population, I don't know, 16 million or whatever we've got here, and an hour and a half after the deal, it's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not certified yet, right? But it's close enough to call. Sure, sure. And um, and, and and as Chet pointed out, the first half hour that we were on the air is he explained how these machines operated and what we got here in Hardy County in the state of Florida and how it worked. Um, pretty good deal. I'm going to say to the old mechanical machine. Oh, you won't look at that. Uh, right. holes in the <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're, we're at uh, 77% in the state. done in the state of Florida. Are there any counties in Florida that have not reported yet? I'm just curious. Um... I don't, uh, it looks like Santa Rosa has 0% reporting. Okay. And that's about uh, as far in the west as you can go, I believe. Lee and Liberty, 0%. Hillsborough, 0%. I don't. Hillsborough, 0%. Yeah, early voting. Early voting. I'm just precincts reporting. This is just precincts. They, they do have early voting ballots completed. Vote by, no, well, no, Hillsborough's not saying vote by mail. Um, but it, Sometimes I think it's a, it takes a little while for some of the these subcategories to update. So okay. don't don't jump it, to conclusions. Well, that that's it's why I'm you know, because it's pretty much the county is a uh, decent sized populated area. Is there a Florida map showing red and blue by counties? Hillsborough Hillsborough turnout is uh, four hundred seventy five thousand votes. Okay. So if you um, they're they're about a are they at a million? I'm sure they are. Uh, nine nine hundred and twenty-four thousand eligible. So you're you're not far from you're seventy-five thousand from a million eligible voters. Yeah. Four hundred and five faster ballot. And if you look at uh you know race between Marco and Val Demings, you're you know over a million apart. Mm -hmm. So that four hundred and something isn't yeah, going to you know. So. Yeah, as Sam was asking, how how are the the shade the shaded uh, uh, going how the, how are the colors on the map going? As it, how is it panning out? I'll get it out in a minute. Just, yeah. Let me see if I can find that. Here in Florida. Yeah, just a moment. And while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm looking to see if there's any other um, declared winner of states. Um, not see anything. This one, I believe. Uh, um, that little one gets that one makes this. And does it show the color of Pullman Flat? It doesn't. On mine, it doesn't. That would be interesting. <laughs> oh, let's see your off. Okay. That's, that's where you know that one. You see anything on Jay Collins? That's another one that was. I know, I'm not seeing anything there in, either. In the Senate seat? Yeah. Now, didn't, now, did Tari Chris hold a Senate seat? No, he ran for Senate. He wrote that. Because mm -hmm. I was going that, I was curious if he had to give that up to run for, but he had already done that. Or he, he, he had, he had uh, he had appointed to fill, when he was governor, he filled the Senate seat, appointed to fill the Senate seat with um, Lemieux. And when that come up for uh, the next election cycle is when he tossed his name in the hat to run. So did Marco Rubio. Okay, okay. So that's how that stuff played out. Okay. I pulled up a state map. Um, if we can look at, by county, if we can look at um, the state of Florida, in the Senate race, um, for Marco Rubio, keep in mind, uh, they're, now this is from BBC, they're reporting 85% of expected votes counted. So a couple of 
these counties could change, but at this point, I only see six counties that are blue. In Florida. In Florida, everything else And is I'm red. going to and most, most of those were university counties. Probably, yes. Uh, and uh, let's go to uh, the governor's race. Let me pull that up. I'm going to, I'm going to guess Alachua, probably Duval, yeah. Orange. Leon. Yeah. Yeah. That's a few. Only five in the governor's race. Really? Gadsden County, Leon, Tallahassee. Um, Gadsden well, County. Now, that's very interesting because that, that was, I guess, at, at some point was more of a rural, probably red county. Yes. But due to the influence of Leon being next to it, where Tallahassee is, a lot of the people have moved out. Become a bedroom community. Yes. No, yes. to be honest with you, I don't know why they had it blue on the map because, uh, okay, yeah, Charlie Chris took 62%. I see the check and mark. The check mark is for the entire state. Okay. okay. Because they had a check mark beside Ron DeSantis, but the check mark's for the entire state. Gadsden County, 62% for Charlie Chris. Leon was uh, 56% for Charlie Chris. Um, Alachua was 50 for Charlie Chris. Um, Orange County is 52 for Charlie Chris. Wow. And Broward County was 60 for Charlie Chris, and that's it. Everything else went wrong. Dade County? Uh, um, at, this, at this moment, 83% is reported in Dade County. And, that's Miami. That's and Ron DeSantis is at 55%, Charlie Chris 43. Wow. Over a 10% spread. They said a lot of the female voters in Dade County switched to DeSantis because of Charlie Chris. Well, you know, they, she's from there. Sense, yes. She's from Miami, yes. right? Yes. And, and you know that their school board down there in Dade County went conservative. Yes. Uh, this, the, the primary conservative control school board, the largest conservative, conservative control school board in the country, I believe. Correct. That is saying something. But they, there was a, I forget who it was, was down there last week. They went into a breakfast restaurant and uh -huh. interviewed people. Not breakfast tacos, was no, it? No, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, they, were, they were having drinks. Oh, breakfast. okay, okay. But, uh, Gene knows what I'm talking they, Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they, were, uh, they were referring to the fact of his money makers with their female you know, they had a nickname for her, uh, Carla Marx, I believe was what they, <laughs> was her name was Carla, all right? And they called, they started, they were referring to her as Carla Marx. That's called Carla Marx. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm wondering as a Democrat, I mean, as thinking as a Democrat, I'm wondering if they might have been better gambling with Nancy Fred. <laughs> Simply for the fact, he had, Charlie Chris had a tremendous amount of baggage. I mean... Well, I had someone say the other day, and I haven't put much thought into it until they said that, said, um, was, if you look at poll numbers, even from the beginning, even before the primary, he was way, way behind DeSantis. I think uh, when you and I were here talking one time around the primary, maybe before the primary, mm -hmm. one of the polls was showing something like, in the 90s, 90% chance that he was going to lose, mm -hmm. and DeSantis mm -hmm. was going to win. I mean, this uh, was, this was no surprise. Well, you know. But the question that was posed was, is he looking at something further than the seat for governor? Knowing, I mean, I clear signs. How in the world he would see, you know, um, clear signs that he's not going to I mean, I don't think. I mean, I'm not sure what polls they might have even been able to look at that would have suggested otherwise. But was there was there an alternative, you know, goal? Was there another motivation? Was it, you know, I, I know f fundraising packs. Is, well, it, is it for further down the road? Is I, it to support other candidates? Is it, or for, is he becoming a a a a a a a a a a a Beto, 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 O'Rourke, the guy. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. he doesn't ever win anything, and that's okay because he just lives off it. He makes a living off of running different offices, like governor, state representative, house. He's all right. these these things, right. and and I mean because Charlie Chris, a lot of baggage. 
switching parties. You you could not hammer him down on one thing because he's been on this side, he's been on that side. He stood for this, he stood for that. It's really tough for an individual to switch parties while they're in office. Yeah, and it, it, it just and then basically you rebuke yourself for everything that you yeah. said. Yeah. So I'm not saying that I think either way, Ron DeSantis is tough to be, but I don't think they, I don't. No, no, I agree, and 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 I don't think I saw one Joe Biden or Kamala Harris down here campaigning for it. Yeah, they said that the president was coming to speak. Right, but I didn't see Charlie there. No, that's when I was before you I got was, here. I was thinking he was supposed to have campaigned for him, but I didn't know but if it I ever didn't happened. Show him when he went on the platform. No. Interesting. No. And and then um, um, I may be wrong, but I didn't, I, see, him, I didn't right. see him either. You know, now that you mention that, it seems like I did hear that on some news channel somewhere that he he was being campaigned for, but he wasn't present. Or something, you know, wasn't there. You know, and that could like, be the case, but I mean, it, I don't, I don't think nationally the Democrats put a lot behind Trump in this. I mean, yeah, he had a lot of ads on TV. I want to. Uh, he spent some money. Yeah. Somebody did mention over uh, the uh, the Kentucky Senate seat. Okay, uh, Rand Paul, fifty fifty six percent. But but the the interesting part here is write ins, five hundred and thirty three votes. I don't know if that's Randy Meek. That five hundred and thirty three, <laughs> but you know, over in uh, Kentucky there. Well, he's been voting every precinct. <laughs> he's just been driving around all day. Every day. Precinct. He voted early. All day. All day. All day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Lucy's been. I noticed those pictures on his yeah. Facebook page. That's you know, interesting. Um, interesting. Um, interesting. Um, I think something very interesting. Um, the the pre, uh, El Salvador has a new president, and yes. he's a relatively young young guy, I think. And um, he recently gave an interview uh, to Tucker Carlson, and um, he speaks very good English. And he says that in El Salvador, if you if you steal something that costs one peso, or you steal something that costs a thousand pesos, you go to jail. That's just it. You go to jail. Not California. He said that that this country is is coming apart from within, right in front of people's eyes in broad daylight. He was referring to California, where you can steal X amount of uh, thousands of dollars before they'll even arrest you. And he said people are allowing it. that. You know that this American citizens are allowing it to happen. And I think that's very telling for someone. You know, he says, you know, yeah, do we got problems here? He said we got a lot of problems out here, but you've got a lot of issues going on. And he said, and it's not happening. In behind closed doors, it's happening right out in broad daylight in public, and people there's there's a segment of the population that's kind of like going along with it, and I think that drove a lot of people to vote too. And what is the streets of this country going to be like tomorrow as a result of the election? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. right, right. That's what you have to fear these days. Right, right. And but mm-hmm. I don't inform. I think we're. No, I, no, I, no, I think no. I'm glad and and and. It, it's almost mind-boggling how different it is from state to state and how it's handled. Just turn it over to Grady. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That chop zone would have lasted about 10 minutes. You know, long for, you get that's there. right. Long enough. You heard the same I speech actually, I heard. Actually, he would have had the uh, press conference set up before he got there. Yeah, yes, yes, for sure. Um, but no, I, I, but seriously, though, I, I'm really surprised. I don't know if y'all are surprised as I am, but to me, for, for day counting, to go red for the The largest populated uh, county it is the state, right? What does that say? I mean, they're changing down there. I would say. I mean, even um, Dr. Susan McMahon's mm-hmm. addressed that because of the Hispanic population. Mm-hmm. You're coming from those oppressed countries. Yeah. Some of them registered Democrats because they feel they're in a democracy, mm-hmm. but their family values cannot allow them to 
Right. And there was and mm. back in uh, 2016, uh, the Haitian population down there was dead set against Hillary because of the Clinton Foundation. The fundraising they had done the, the, for the uh, earthquake victims in Haiti, and they're standing there waiting for the money, and it never showed up. Meanwhile, all the Clintons had raised, the foundation had raised bukus of bucks, and, not, and they did that. No, absolutely not. Because they were down there mm-hmm. protesting against one of her, her uh, I guess she was visiting the area or something in Miami, and, and the, the Haitian community wasn't having any part of it. And hurting people was hurt again. I'm sorry? Hurting people were hurt again. Yeah, yes, 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 I, absolutely. I, I don't and remember what year that people? was. It was 2009, 2008, but that place, literally, I mean, it was, it, it destroyed, I mean, big time. You have, uh, down in Miami Day, okay. the race for governor. There is 1,034 precincts that have reported out of 1,049. So there's a few more left. But you have 387,975 votes for Ron DeSantis and 307,988 for Charlie Chris. So it's 55% to 43%. Now that number could could widen. It could get closer. That's right. With what you're saying. Um, 1,034 out of 1,049 precincts. But there again, going back to the media outlet, I don't think it's going to change. Well, no, they've already. Right, 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 you're right. You're right. Absolutely, Sam. Thank you. Yes. I mean, right. And we we were just we were just discussing Miami Dade. County, that particular race, and you yeah. uh, you were a little bit. Surprised I am. Though. I am, because because I, I if, if I recall back in 2020 uh, election night, uh, Ron DeSantis said he county or Trump, and it did for him tonight. Yeah. That is, you feel of the job he's been doing. Yes. Yes. I, I, I've had people that are, like I said, a Democrat that came in and, and, and showed people. Um, so. It would be hard to vote against him. I, I think so. I mean, he's, no he's a rival person. He, he's, he's, you know where he stands on stuff, and I think people respect that. He's not flip floppy And not to, not to pile on, but to me, even Charlie Crist, when he was a Republican, he was kind of. A little here, a little there, you know, it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think people like steadiness. They like to see somebody that's, you know, stays the course. When, when do you make his decision or not? Stay, right. stay your ground. Mm-hmm. Hillsburg. Yes. Hillsburg. Only looking at Hillsburg. Ron DeSantis is 54%. Tony Chris is 44 A 10-point spread. Now, Hillsburg. what was the, was the Miami about? The, Ten points. He was close. Miami Dade was forty-three to fifty-five. It's a little more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's just dial in Charlie's home. Yeah, check out Idaho's county. Yes, I'll pull that up. That's it doing over there. And, and it, it also, I, I do work here. They seem to know. You know one thing about what about St. Petersburg? It seems every time I turn around, they have a new mayor. Yeah. It looks like the homes that very Long, you know, um, at least they haven't joined the arrest of news. Well, that's certainly good. Uh, 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 what was the last person? Kreisman was, was there, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, there's a, there's a completely different person standing up there. I'm like, what happened to Kreisman? You know, it's, I don't know. And they, and they, and they do, I believe, actually have tournaments on their mirrors. Do they? Okay. Some of the municipalities have tournaments on their mirrors. Sam asked for Pinellas. Yes. So we have 100% reporting in Pinellas. Ron DeSantis is at 54.98, almost 55%, to Charlie Chris 44.41. Oh, so wow. uh, a 10 point, really know him. Yeah, 10 yeah. point spread there. Yeah. Almost 11 points. But he there. won Orange County. Or like that. He did. Let's pull up and see how, 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 how well. That's part of the I 4 Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, one in swings. Yeah, you know, the same direction as Miami, while the other 
And then, and we're fixing to find out by how much Chet's checking for right now what's going on in our state. Uh, 46 to 52. Forty-six, Ron DeSantis. Just about the office. Fifty-two, yeah. Charlie Chris. Yeah. Now you know, and, and, and back to the Orange County as, as you're looking that that, that for him. Um, I would suspect that this is that because of uh, Disney World. Yes. Good point. Very good point, Gene. Because I was going to mention Val Demings being from Orlando. Uh, I could see where she would. Probably easily win that because he's, I think, somewhat popular up there. But that's probably exactly what it was. And you got to keep in mind, too, this. her husband is the mayor of uh, Orange, Orange County. County. What, Dyer? Or no, 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 no. Not of Orlando. Oh, of okay. Orange Orange County. County. okay. Yes. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> so, uh, like Mike Dyer. I mean, no, 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 Jerry Dennings. Yeah, and okay. he was previously okay. the, um, sure. the sheriff and term limited out. They have a charter in Orange County. Charter says, I think, uh, you know, he serves two terms, I think, in a constitutional office okay. seat, so he had termed out, Okay. and uh, then he ran for county mayor, they have a mayor for the county, Okay. and uh, uh, overwhelmingly, he's extremely popular. I've met the guy, can't help but like him, I mean, he's a wonderful right. fellow. But did you see him endorse him? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at Flagler yeah, County. Yeah, we're going to get Flagler County now. Yeah. Yeah. Ron DeSantis at 66% and Charlie Crist at 32. Ooh, that's the other end of I-4. Yeah. Yeah, it's where it ends, about pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. Well, it's Interesting been, stuff. Yes. And so, is it too early to tell how many seats are... are, are if you're looking, are they picking up seats? Can you tell? You know... It, are there too many states still counting? I'll tell you the problem that I run into when trying to search and get those results because when you're looking at um, different every every mainstream media outlet out there has their results up of what they it's hard to decipher is this what they're predicting this is actual results you have to look at the fine print and it's really hard to um, for me to get something on the fly here for you guys but, yeah and that's what I have a over here too but I thought you know you might have a you know, the, BBC the, the, is basically saying uh, Senate is currently at, at least what they're saying is 38 to 38 and this may be this may be the same that they've been saying all night how 48 Democrat 92 Republican got to get the 218 majority so there's a long ways to mm -hmm. To, to I have to heard definitive with either one. Of Dick Morris, you know, you know Dick Morris, yes, yes. he was predicting some high rate, like fifty-five, sixty-two. Um, See, I thought was, I don't know. Well, that'd be great if a Republican, but I, that'd be, you know, he I mean, really sets the bar that's high. A, that's a big swing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was reading quite a few articles today that they've been trending. That the Republicans are going to seats in the Senate, uh, getting close, tightening up. And today, yesterday, today, I read quite a few articles that said there's a, it leans Republican best or so slightly. And I recall one individual that like 1% of the Republicans take. So we don't, we don't have a lot of numbers from places. We do have what happened in Florida. Now, that's what the whole thing is like. Yeah, uh, but, but rule America versus MC. This is why we have an electoral college. Right. A lot of folks don't understand, but this is right. exactly why we have an electoral college because rule, rule America doesn't have a vote if you listen to just uh, the cities mm -hmm. in high, high densely mm -hmm. populated areas. And as an example, look at Oregon and Idaho. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. No they have no voice. They don't have yes. But people want to. All right. And they're, they're trying to leave Oregon and retard Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. And they're also talking about Virginia versus West Virginia. Some counties in Virginia would leave Virginia and join West Virginia. And Virginia was all clear. It was going to take the, the state, allowing them to do, do so, which was a little hard to do. Like, 
Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We and we and we can only hope that good is done across the board. And, and you know, I think a lot of people, the economy is the big thing, regardless if you're here or Midwest or wherever. But being on Facebook, go buy some groceries, fill your gas tank, check your bank account. Yeah. We yeah. can four one game. Before you go vote, mm -hmm. what's happening? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, every now and then you hear a politician or an elected official who is campaigning put it in perspective of are you in a better position today or were you in a better position two years ago? And a lot of folks use that as the rule of measure as to how they cast their ballot. Absolutely. And that perspective is individualized. You know, that perspective may be different for, for some folks than others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we're, if we, if we put the cap on here. I think we're pretty good. I mean, okay. I think uh, I would I would encourage folks to if they want something nationally, go to their, their preferred source, you know, mm -hmm. source and uh, keep a touch with that. But as far as local and pretty much state, we have covered it from tip to tip. And, and uh, you know, we have been here since seven, making sure that everybody that is uh, watching us or listening to us uh, got the local election results as fast as they possibly could uh, right here on 102.1. And we appreciate on. your expertise in, in how the system works, the voting system works, and you would know. And and Sam, Sam, you uh, have been an elected official. Uh, In, you know, elected in office yes. up in Bowling Green, Bowling Green. And, 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 and served in the, uh, for the Ridge League of Cities, right? in Florida, 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 Florida League of Cities. And, and so you, you, you got to experience the other side of the, the, the uh, bias of the, the, the and, thing and, there. And, and, you know, I mean, it's full elected. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a well-known polling fact. They're the closest to the people of mm -hmm. all the elected. Most communities full of it where there are four other people, four other communities right. be part right. of it. But the, the common part in the polling, the people feel that the local municipal elected are the ones they can trust the most. Because they see the grocery store. I'm sorry to say that. that. That's the reason why. Yes. You know, they, more than likely, they know you personally. They knock on the door. Sure. <laughs> and I've heard him, yeah. They know yeah. where you live. <laughs> and, exactly. and Gene, you know, and, and you've lived in Hardy County all your life. And, and you know a lot of people here. You know the county. And what better person to have in here than a good friend like you to, to, to you know, give your opinion on how you think people are, what, what's written to you about how they feel about, about, you know, issues on the ballot. You know, it wasn't just the candidates. It was, it was where they, it was how they were standing on the issues and what issues matter. Some went way over here, some went way over here. But I think the ones that were, were they made in the middle. Right, and we're losing money here. We're hurting. We're, yes. yeah. well, I do thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to have you. Uh, Chet, very interesting. Absolutely. Learned a lot about it. Thank you, guys. And Sam, he just said, Hey, I'm just saying. But you know the thing is, Young people, if you are there listening to us still, vote, take part in your community, take part in your county, take part in your state, mm -hmm. because you are the future. Yeah, don't vote, vote, don't complain. You know, that is true. Absolutely. I, I have, this is something that I've struggled mm -hmm. with is why, you know, difficulties in voter registration. And I have, met, I have conducted many voter registration drives over the years. And you look at the number and you think, why is it more people register to vote? Or you look at the turnout and think, why did more people turn out to vote? And you start thinking about ways or reasons that that might not seem important to you. But um, sometimes I often think that, you know, there are probably folks out there who may or may not be registered to vote, but could be registered to vote and sit here and think, I've never cast a ballot before. And... What do I do when I get there? I'm I'm old enough. I'm an adult. I should know what to do, and I don't want to be embarrassed. And that's definitely, I want to assure everybody, 
uh, it, it is fantastic. If you're an election worker and you find somebody that's cast their ballot for the first time, you want to know that. You know, that is great. That is wonderful stuff. And they're there to help you. You don't have to turn the ballot about what do I do. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you. So, you know, if you may be registered or you're not sure how to do it, call your supervisor of elections. I know we reach further than Harvey County, so uh, just Google um, whatever county you're in and supervisor of elections. That number will pop up. Give them a call. Say, what do I got to do to be registered to vote? What, what, where do I vote? And they'll answer those questions for you. They'll give you the precinct. They'll give you the address. Um, you go out there and you ask somebody there, what do I need to do? You know, and they would be honored to help a first-time voter. There's definitely not to be conservative about whether you should or shouldn't vote. Two things. One, one that's breaking news just coming in. Uh, townhallnews.com has, has declared that um, Kemp wins governor in Georgia. Stacey Abrahams was defeated. Was it Abrahams or April? Was Abraham. 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 was defeated in Georgia tonight. Brian Kemp will uh, maintain his governorship there. And also one to think someone's hiding back over there. I thought she was <laughs> no, I thought she was out there in the eating area, but she's down there. Like There's a chair there. right over there somewhere. I like to sit on the floor. Callie, our very own Callie, and we want to thank Callie. She went down to election headquarters here in Hardy County, supervisor of elections office tonight, and uh, phoned in some information for down there. Right, so we she had an assistant down there to help her too. She did, and, and what was the assistant name? Not terrible. Okay. Warren Cornell. Warren Cornell. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you did a great job, did. didn't he? Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, he and and, and he he uh, Tally was and he told us as well here that he is interested in politics, and that's it. Somebody, if you've got it in your in your in your heart. I don't want to do that. Uh, senior night. Uh, football game was a couple of games ago. He's a wildcat. Yeah. He, he walked senior night. I don't know if it was there when he was he was a candidate for uh, home uh, team. Someone in his uh, uh, little bio that they read out loud was that he was interested in politics. He was interested well, in furthering It's good to politics. hear Absolutely. that there are young people Absolutely. interested in going out. He is an encourager. <laughs> yep. We did a great job on the radio, so tell them we said thank you. Okay. You, you see him. Okay. Yeah, his mom is a school board member. I'm sorry? His mom is a school board member. Okay. So that's why, that's why he has his father's his father's father's grandfather was forced to. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. There you go. Well, it kind of runs in the line. There, there. you go. See? Yeah. Mm. That's very good. He did, he did a great job. So, and thank you all so much for coming down here tonight. Somebody mm -hmm. can tonight with donuts. <laughs> I, I already ate one. I already ate one. One, one. I ate one. Gene, Gene only had one. one no, one. Gene only had one. No one. He only had one. So he's being good. Yeah. And he, good deal. He, I he still. Had, I, congratulations. I have not left you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm curious, okay. I'm curious if Gene and Sam coordinated that entrance together while we go. I don't know. Gene mentions donuts and Sam walks in the door. I mean, I, I'm well, wondering you were if that was coordinated. I sent him a message. Right there, there in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I could not believe it. I said, Sam, we got donuts. And he went, and there's <laughs> well, I heard the name of the ship. He's not going out wrong, perfect. But yeah. He, yeah. No, that's great. Glad each and every one of you came down here. Well, JJ, thank you for what you do for the community. Love it. Absolutely. Love, I love being here. This Absolutely. is a great community to be a part of. It's just for anybody. Maybe listening or watching us on Facebook. If, if they want to catch any you guys anytime, how do they do so? They can call us here at station 863 773 9282. What is that? What? Yeah, that was and, the right number. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> he, and, and the, website, book he had, the book I was, he had on his eyes. I'm like, did he, is he leading me on this? Road I, road? I was leading you to plug the website, okay. but yeah. Oh, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the phone number works too, or uh, it's one. 102 numbers 1021.com. That website. And, and there's no point between the two and the one. It's 1021.outlaw.com. Click on the live. You can just anywhere in the world. If you would like to contact us, there is an email address on there. 
Now, the other cool thing is there's probably very few people that doesn't have an Alexa in their house now. You can ask Alexa to play the station and she yeah. automatically starts yeah. for you. Yeah, I, I do have that in my office guy, quite yeah. often. Yeah, yeah, it works great. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we used to, used to uh, tease people in the morning right here. We don't really see it. Just <laughs> say, yes. say play. All, of the, all of them at home right now are clicking on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, enjoy that. All right, all right. Uh, we forget anything, or we is that what we call up? I think we're all caught up in yeah. uh, Jay, thank you for having us. Well, well, you're, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you for joining us for Real Country 102.1. Oh, he had a really